Šiaip labai norėtųsi to, kad žinai, ne, 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 ne tiek formalaus ir ne, neįsitempus, o kad labiau panašėtų jau kaip, kaip aš jį gyvenam kalbą. O linkas bus ten evento, evento reiškia, ten jau. Dabar linką aš tau atsimčiau. Tai, tai linkas jau to evento sukurtas buvo. Tai jis jau yra pasidalintas su visais. Ai, tai ten gi... Tai yra šitą akantą. Kur yra dabar šitas...
Sveidēji. Ne, 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 Angliškai bus dėl to, kad lėts start. Jau atransiruojasi. Hello everybody, my name is Tortudas and I'm excited to you to welcome on board to our floating raft that is a home for our event Fluid Perspectives that is the final event of building narrative program that was organized, that is organized by Architecture Fund. Uh, both Architecture Fund and uh, the program is part of the Future Architecture Platform. And during this uh, program, Architecture Fund was and still is uh, researching the power of narration in architecture, its ability to change and form the discourse of architecture, and uh, not only uh, find new and un un untold, untold stories, but provide methodologies and the ways to narrate and influence the architecture and before going into a more brief detail about uh, the event I would like to go back uh, to one cold and wet winter evening when we met with Justinas who is on board with us today and we both bore uh, an aching question uh, how to loosen up the rigid boundaries of architecture discourse and how to find new ways to talk about architecture and uh, we had uh, a speaker coming to Vilnius and uh, a public talk was out of the question. We wanted something more fluid, something not bounded uh, by, uh, by auditorium and something that gives more space for the, uh, to think and imagine. So, and here we are now on a floating raft 
that has no steering wheel whatsoever and we are at the mercy of Neris River. And uh, I think to a great extent we achieved the physical fluidity. Uh, however, the ambition goes beyond the physical position and that's why we invited four artists, architects and thinkers to share their perspectives on, on the city and uh, the way they see and perceive our changing environments. The idea of the floating graft strongly implies uh, that we want to abstain from academic rigidity. At the same time, we don't want to lapse into looping sentimentality. Uh, just like we now, we are drifting on this slowly rotating raft. Uh, I would like to ask uh, both the participants and our viewers to share their uh, opinions and perspectives on uh, the city. It doesn't have to be Vilnius, it doesn't even have to be a material place. And I also have to acknowledge the physical absence of uh, artist, researcher and creator Will Jennings, at, uh, whose uh, potential visit to Vilnius was the reason this event was conceived. Uh, travel restrictions do not allow us to bring Will here uh, to Vilnius, or, however we decided to use this situation into our advantage. And the event will happen simultaneously here in Vilnius and in London while we afloat on our raft uh, we'll, we'll be uh, walking along the Thames River and we'll be recording his walk and we will be listening to our conversation however, however he will not tell anything during uh, the stream this way you will want to evoke the idea of keynote listener that replaces the, the position of keynote speaker I think like in these turbulent times, more than anything, we have to learn to listen. And at the same time, we want to uh, try how the audio can change the sp spatial experience. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have walked these, the same path many times before, but now as he's walking, he will have a completely different sonic environment. So the question, uh, our idea is that two rivers and two different two different rivers and two different so the question is open uh, so is the question about our over reliance of visual information uh, relying on path paths that we usually take and more general uh, the perspective of the city so uh, today every participant uh, will have approximately 15 minutes to give their take on the city to share their perspective after after that we will have a discussion that i very much uh, welcome to join uh, the viewers you can write comments and questions in to the to architecture fund facebook uh, in the event page and also to instagram so feel free to ask and comment and we will uh, read those questions here so, this final thing, I just want to briefly introduce uh, who is on board today with us. Uh, full bios you can find on the Facebook description. So, on my left I have Tanis Borokas, who is an artist, curator and lecturer in Vilnius Art Academy at the Department of Sculpture. He recently had this solo exhibition at, at uh, Project Space Editorial. Next to him is Rasek Miloskaite. She's an artist, uh, urbanist and uh, activist, uh, founder of TACA, initiative trying to rejuvenate uh, river culture in Konas, as well as uh, co-founder of the project in Projects Invisible Architecture and Echo Textura that uh, educates uh, on architecture uh, for the blind and deaf. Uh, next is Maria Nemchenko, one of the founders of Collective Brood, uh, exploring uh, brutalist architecture from political and social uh, perspective and bringing uh, housing back to housing blocks. Uh, next to her is Julius Bajkwan. Uh, he's been working on sculpture restoration in the advertisement industry and contemporary art center cinema, currently teaching 
academic drawing, photography, graphic design, and visual communication and Vilnius College of Design. Also works as a freelance artist, advertising, creative, graphic, graphic designer, and filmmaker. Next is uh, Justinas Didianas, who is one of the uh, members of Architecture Fund and one of the curators of this event and the whole program. And also he's an uh, exhibition architect. Mm, and uh, finally you have Kypras Dubaskas, an artist based in Vilnius. Uh, recently had this solo exhibition in Contemporary Art Center. And, uh, while, and also did, uh, he, he already floated this along the Risk River during the, his artistic research uh, that I'm sure he will talk about later. So that's all about uh, our participants and uh, without too much over-structuring our floating I'll invite uh, the dance to start our conversation and we'll go in circles. So thank you and please. Thank, thank you. Mercy of uh, the River Neris. And actually we're facing the episode when the mercy was lost, <laughs> so to speak, and we're stuck in this, uh, how you call it, shore. Uh, actually the very first idea I would like to talk about is the, the very corporal experience we faced uh, when we stepped on, on the board itself, on the deck. Uh, and this experience, or uh, the beginning of 20th century, before... And uh, the other idea I was uh, thinking about while entering the, the, our, our um, dock, I was thinking about uh, logging or log driving in the rivers. And a few weeks ago I was in Riga Biennale, uh, Riboka, uh, in Latvia, in Riga, and uh, I encountered new piece by a Lithuanian artist uh, Lina Lapelite and her partner Mantas Petraitis. And actually the entire piece is based on log driving. And so somehow it's, it's really um, kind of rare thing nowadays to think about this part of society. Like it's non-existent anymore, probably, at least in our uh, country. Um, part of society was log drivers who used to participate in, in uh, wood production somewhere upstream then let's say they used to gather logs and it was entire industry of, of men with their corporal reality in the wet reality of, of river and, and back then uh, your comment about mercy of river would be really on point because it was one of the most dangerous works uh, if we take in consideration that uh, you need to handle like very heavy produce like logs in the river you need to drive them you need to somehow bring the uh, cargo safe and uh, yeah it, it was hundreds and thousands of men and, and suddenly after steam engine and after uh, different means of transportation after uh, pavement of the streets and as like asphalt uh, introduction of asphalt in, in ur urban kind of context or I infrastructure uh, they were not needed anymore it's the most risky thing like i think the last uh, log drivers were using river neris in 1957 i think and also this is the year when part of river stream was redirected up in belarus uh, and how for like a uh, at least part of the volume of the river or, or the, uh, was lost due to that. And with later irrigation and then ur ur urban kind of restructuring of, of river banks and shores it became maybe uh, slower, less, less velocity with uh, like less like of the speed. So now, like, okay, we, we, we're sitting in, in this. Uh, in this um, situation right now almost stuck and it it contrasts a lot with the reality like with nowadays reality and why I'm talking about it is actually because I want to highlight the very corporal experience of like kind of means of transportation 
not necessarily cargo, but your body itself. Like, uh, because when we think about um, perspective nowadays, it's highly influenced by uh, streaming, by di digitalization of our experiences, by steam engines, by flights, ferries, uh, and other like machines. But uh, just imagine that uh, before steam engine, every human being used to uh, uh, reach his destination only with the means of his musculature or his muscles. Whether it, it of, of course, with the help of horse or, or log or, or river stream, but it was still based on, on human muscle kind of power. And nowadays I think we lost a lot of, of that. Um, also because of like industrialization and expansion of the cities, uh, already a uh, letterist uh, or movement in, in France or, or Situationist International were talking about this kind of, like, that, that you don't know your city anymore. You know you're stuck in your district, in your small village, uh, which is embedded in the city itself, and you never see another part of the city. Because majority of your movement or logistics in the city is based on economy. In a sense that you're even leisure. Like in the morning, you go to your job, then you go somewhere to have some sort of leisure and recuperation in order to wake up in the morning to go again to the, to the work. And uh, like, at least how I see, see it, the um, street system, public transportation is, is coined in order to be efficient, to, 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 to really mean efficient. Like, if, if in order to redistribute uh, commodities and, and workers, actually. And it's true to the same idea, sorry for jumping back in history, with Flaneur, the introduction of this uh, stroller through the passages in, in France, how Baudelaire coined it. So back then it was privileged time. It means that you don't need to go anywhere else, you can stop. But if you're forced somehow because of the economic reality or some other realities to, to be always efficient and on time somewhere, uh, then you have a completely different relationship with the city. You're somehow disattached from different parts of the city, realities, different districts, uh, all, all those borderlines where a city meets nature or like uh, so-called nature. It's a con con construct as we know it. But. Um, yeah, so that's how I see, for example, this Situationist International idea of uh, derive, or this kind of de derive. When you enter yourself with your entire body, and again, use your optics and uh, physical kind of musculature and abilities to reach certain points in the city to re-establish this corporal relationship with the city. <coughs> because all those like digital tools, like let's say, GPS, like Google Maps and so on, they do the opposite. They, ush, like they, they make a kind of certainty every time where you are. And this idea of derive or like to consciously go into the city to, to lose yourself, to lose the track and to find new things, like rearrange your, like the, to have dynamic relationship with the city is actually the opposite. It's, it's not based on, on the outcome and on the end point. It's actually... Uh, and it's based on, on, on uh, eyes and lenses we have and not the lenses uh, we inherited from technological kind of revolution uh, we hold in our hands because uh, brain can work like very particularly like we see in Instagram the, the, the images and we can realize that the scale oh shit I see the bridge it's huge and you can recognize the same thing in the picture but you don't have corporal kind of aspect to it the scale of your body approaching the bridge, let's say. Camera do something else. It's like the differences in, in memory, like humans in their brain, when they develop memories, we have, let's say, semantic memory and uh, the other one, which is uh, like uh, more like, uh, yeah, momentary, maybe? Sorry for my English. Or well, maybe I can say that episodic, like episodic yeah. memory. Use the same means of... <laughs> notes. Uh, so semantic memory about the city, let's say we take in consideration city Vilnius and the river Neris and we heard so many stories about 
city of Vilnius and River Neris, but it's always based on certain group and it's semantic memory. Semantic memory is something we inherit or we read uh, verbally or textually in the books or we hear through the storytelling. While episodic memory is something which happens in the brain only with the bodily encounter with things and repetition of experience, like of experiences in the city, let's say. Does it make sense? In a way, because, yeah, this is one of the points. And if you say, I live in Vilnius, but usually I, I base only in one district and I go to the other, you have completely different storytelling there, which can overlap or which can completely be in contrast with each other, with, with, with uh, each. Therefore, you ha constantly have those antagonisms. And Vil Vilnius is really rich in antagonisms because of uh, constant occupations and uh, like terrible losses because of Holocaust or because of uh, exile. And newcomers constantly go there uh, having their own mythology about the city and not necessarily taking in consideration all those mythologies and stories about it uh, from pre previous uh, inhabitants of the city. But uh, nowadays what I see, and maybe it's a good thing, that we try to sensitize ourselves and therefore theory can be handy in order to sensitize our uh, kind of interpretations of the city and, and therefore we usually have discussions and try to invite different uh, people to hear their experiences about it in order to hack our semantic memory and to really share and to allow like other voices to, to change our perception which usually is inherited unwillingly through the school program or, or, or through the family stories. But the very moment you have this clash with, with, uh, with the other, so-called other, which is not so different than us, we can hear different stories about it. Yeah, so you see, we were stuck and now we're like spinning to more faster pace into another lagoon to be stuck again to the swim <laughs> so therefore it really contrasts with how i see it the the tempo and therefore i would like to remind ourselves about philosopher paul Kinyas. shortly to recognize like about the loss and speed uh, speed is power but uh, only when you have uh, some sort of uh, goal but if your goal is really to to be lost in a city or to give yourself to the mercy of River Neris, then the, uh, the slowness is uh, a good tool. Yeah, I, I probably would finish now with, with this idea that uh, this privileged time, and it sounds like terrible, yeah, it's like privileged time, it's, it has to do with privilege, yeah? But really time, if we think about it, is really privileged. If we can, um, and, and like throw ourselves into those experiences which has very particular density and boredom. Therefore, I really like boredom from time to time. Because we're so like, uh, still I'm holding this tool which is a phone and it, with Instagram in it. But actually, if you not entertain this and you give yourself to the pace of the river, it can be very privileged time reclaiming your own life kind of perception which is not necessary embedded in economic or like other relationships uh, when you are forced to be productive in a much faster pace uh, yeah so like it's like slow food movement it's like uh, slow uh, slow floating slow slow floating movement on the river so, yeah shortly that's 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 my input in this because it's like it's hard to start so maybe i will be more aggressive with questions later on because i did it already it's your turn <laughs> <laughs> then maybe we can uh, okay. uh, stay with the a little bit uh, what do you think or do you want to have discussion uh, after everyone keep spinning around and uh, it can uh, come back inevitably because i, I there will be predictions. Let's have a rhythm. So, like next to Sansa, Epidanis gave us a quite deep dive into rhythms and velocities of the city. And now it's a rhythm. So, I already feel I have many things to share with you. It's like talking to myself. How's it going to work? Can I give you a little bit? I'll try to speak. 
speak louder. Um, so maybe I'll start also with a little bit um, nostalgic things. <laughs> Uh, like you said, the president. So, uh, like five years ago, when I came back to Konos, the uh, city was also starting to um, wake up more economically. So many more projects were developed and stuff like this happened. And there was one thing that uh, was a trigger, like not, not one problem, but the main trigger that physically made to us to meet and to discuss and finally to establish this community that's called the uh, Deca, which. Um, uh, translated to English means like it flows. Uh, it was that uh, this uh, disappointment in the, uh, dealing with the river. Uh, you know, like this is like a new construction that's uh, 2015, and there are like so many ways to do it nice and to have this connection, soft connection. And there are like so many examples in the world that you can just copy. Just if you don't cannot think something better, you just can copy the good examples. But uh, for our disappointment, these new developments on the riverbank, we're doing uh, these things that was used to do like uh, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you know, really Soviet time, uh, um, concrete embankments uh, with uh, zero connection, zero possibilities to connect to the river. But when you uh, start uh, uh, digging deeper into the history, you see that this is the problem of one, only one generation, basically. Because in, I, don't, I don't remember exact date, but like 50, 60 years ago or something, when the uh, the main bank was built, uh, the, the, I guess it's the, Hydro. the hydroelectric Hydro dam, yes, uh, when it was built, uh, it really cut off all the river activities in Konas, because before Konas was basically the, the port city, and not only the river port city, but the seaport city, because uh, all pretty big, uh, um, like everything was happening in Konas, and uh, or there were like uh, a lot of population people were uh, related to this uh, economic activities happening on the river. There were many uh, seamen, seamen, uh, sailors, the river, river sailors, river men, yeah, and they were living there. It was a community. There was a, even the red light district, like all the proper port city uh, parts. It was forgotten so quickly that it's really hard to comprehend like how in one generation like uh, the sons and daughters of the sailors they were really detached from the river so just because of some physical obstacles and uh, because of uh, these uh, concrete embankments and stuff. So we were sitting there really angry and disappointed and we decided that what we can do we can just start discussing these kinds Which one of you brought that is going to reference the 
uh, famous expedition on the Rest River. So I like to think about it that way. This is the expedition where you need to rediscover, you need to discover and you need to map for others to understand what is it about, what are the banks, and uh, actually to put uh, undiscovered things on the map. So I feel like now going on expeditions in the Kona city and uh, going through these tiny, small rivers and trying to map them again and to understand what's their position in the city is today is super interesting because uh, it's, it became kind of a lawless area. It's a border between something, a border between uh, uh, industrial zones and residential zones. It's a crack uh, between uh, uh, infrastructure areas or something. It's a place that you don't find just following uh, the expedition and discover these places and also interesting thing is that because they are not uh, regulated uh, in a way it's, uh, some of them maybe they are some of them they are dedicated this is the uh, recreational area or something like that but most of them they are just on the border of something so like everything what is left on those uh, two sides uh, ends up uh, in the river and you can find not only trashes, of course, the trash uh, pollution is uh, one problem, but uh, it's also like how people who are living nearby are dealing with these areas. They're really adopting it to themselves. And like I was uh, telling stories before, when we were going on expedition, you can find crazy things. You can find people pouring concrete in the river and building the fences, or maybe just uh, pushing their. Uh, side borders to the extreme and really is trying to build something there <laughs> and uh, this appropriation is very interesting because this is like a backstage of the city within the city and also the interesting part um, about some of the rivers are already in the uh, pipes in the sewage pipe uh, because uh, in, in uh, soviet industrialization uh, times like in 70s, 80s, uh, where they were building all these uh, residential areas, uh, um, concrete uh, buildings. Uh, they they were doing that in a very simple way because they it had to be done very quickly. So instead of finding the way to work with the layers that they already had, because in those areas there were like villages, uh, cows uh, roaming around, and uh, still you can find the uh, apple trees and cherry trees in the middle of uh, residential areas so we just they, they tried to make it like a blank new page so they, most of the um, river cracks they're filled and and now there is no memory you know and you, you can just talk to people and say well, no there's here's the river flowing and like, what what kind of river it's still there and then you can uh, dig out the memories you're probably not going to open up the rivers even though they're like super crazy and interesting places where the river still affects what is happening on top. Like um, I sent out with us one picture. There's like a um, garage, garage. Uh, it's like a, the community of the garages. And for some reason, <laughs> they are following this very, uh, um, very uh, dynamic uh, um, line. It's not straight, it's not uh, corners, it's very fluid. And then it's like, why? What was this? Why this decision happened? And then you find out that there is a river exactly under the street. And then I found in the archives uh, the agreement of this garage community with the um, water management company that they are go they want to uh, put the, the river into the uh, pipe and they are going to take care of that so i try to imagine how this happened but uh, i think this is a very uh, interesting science that you can find all over the city and uh, the the further you go in this expedition the, the more things you find and it reflects you know, everything is uh, connected uh, i forgot what i wanted still more so maybe you can help me or maybe you can yeah but this is a very good topic and in, in, in Vilnius is the same it's a the influence of natural kind of borders yeah. or natural influences on arch architectural or urbanistic kind of environment and it's the same with Vilnius small town again and of its small rivers and 
Springs is re located, like redirected under the city in those old like red brick kind of tunnels underneath the city, which were used later in the ghetto, like where the artisans from ghetto were used to smuggle books, like Yiddish and Hebrew books, through those collectors under under the city. So yeah, and all, all those like. Uh, the way uh, the, the street is like kind of Warm. bent, yeah. like yeah. let's say, according according to the borderline of spring, which used to be there, which is not existent anymore, yeah, that's a or it's very, under very the city. Point because, like, think I will just tell a few more sentences because, uh, like, when you think about it, like those rivers, they uh, formed the city and then they decided which districts are where or how it works. For example, in Konos, uh, River was really the main reason why Okhti uh, Shanchi and Zhalakalnis uh, are quite separated, really separated, it's very difficult to, to uh, reach each other. Uh, and, and that's how they uh, determined the, the urban fabric of Kodas. And then at some point, uh, the city grew over the river and then it erased the impact in some places. And I feel that now, like in international tendencies, is uh, trying to you know, react more to the natural environments. Of course, they are not really natural, natural, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I really like the transition from the kind of talk to the uh, And I think we'll move further into more kind of, let's call it the guts of the city, the, the housing uh, blocks uh, with Maria. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Well, I feel kind of bad to stay away from the river topic. <laughs> it's floating really nicely. But actually, listening to you both, uh, well, all of you speak, including Totem, this and also um, kind of made, so maybe I will start with uh, making a few points of connections to weave the whole connected fabric. Um, so I think what Totem was saying in terms of the narratives and the, I think, both history and city being constructed out of multiplicity of different narratives and multiplicity of different experiences, um, as opposed to one kind of, um, yeah, kind of quite one-sided um, line of history or one-sided kind of representation of the city, and something with the Brute Collective myself together with um, this Hungarian creator Anna Tudosh we were trying to do and still trying to do to kind of create a shared network of um, experiences of people who lived or still live in high rises and how they see it as a um, yeah not, not in the form of like aestheticization of these buildings that seem to be a lot of discussion create this, this collective network that I hope they will be more stronger together and more kind of think about the living environments that in a lot of, of times they're being stigmatized I guess both here and in um, the UK where I lived before well, Scotland also where I lived before there's a lot of prejudice against these buildings um, and yeah, and I kind of was thinking what I could present in terms of um, this floating fluid perspectives uh, point. Um, and actually, I decided to read something, which is um, short text I've written.
where my grandmother lives in the housing blocks there and both of us actually volunteered <laughs> once <laughs> to <laughs> go and take photos from that slide which is kind of here, slide in the bush <laughs> so it's called masking the block and there's an overground part of my grandmother's yard in a high-rise district in Lithuania so my grandmother has never lived in a village as it is common for many people of her generation probably a lot of people have um, grandmothers or grandparents who um, had sort of countryside houses my grandparents never had that she actually moved to Lithuania from Moscow 70 years ago and always lived in shared forms of housing and starting from the so-called commonalkas um, to owning a flat of her own and in fact she remembers that in her first house she and her husband and my granddad's uh, family lived with another three uh, families in the house in Chalakalni so you can imagine there was very little space um, and privacy so getting an apartment or a flat of her own was So owning an apartment of her own was really a dream come true in a sense. So similarly, like in many other countries, not necessary with the, within the so-called former Eastern Bloc, people dreamed of moving into these from these overcrowded accommodations and whether they were Victorian tenement flats, as I guess there's a connection with UK with that. Those of people also lived in overcrowded um, accommodations or wooden shacks to a place of their own still yet still having a sense of community and the idea of communal living intact so traveling forwards in time to the present um, I want to kind of imagine a communal space um, that many of you probably are familiar with um, I guess some of you maybe as well grown up in kind of housing blocks or at least been to them so there's a large open space that unites buildings fronts and backs both a facade and a rear yard, it's left and right, and all of them together. It is marked by designated pathways as well as by unconventional desire trails, and is largely overgrown with flora that has colonized parts of the urban space. These overgrown patches appear to validate some areas and disapprove of others. An old rusty playground seems to fall within the latter kind. So in my childhood's yard in Kadaini, where I grew up, I remember a bush at the back of the plot, plot two. When we were little, we used to get inside of that bush and make our hideout and play inside of it. Um, so the bush that I have seen recently in my grandmother's yard um, has no such luxurious compartment in it as I remember from my childhood. Because it comes already preoccupied inside the bush where it's a slide. Here, both the flora and the objects are deprived of human habitation and of human touch, deprived of function, yet still very much there. So somehow the slide in the bush becomes synonymous with an empty space, even if it physically fills it. If we look at the etymology of the word empty, it becomes clear how this apparent paradox is possible. Empty derives from the old English word Amitic, meaning unoccupied or containing nothing, but also at leisure, which uh, Dan has also mentioned the leisure part too. <laughs> like the punchline to a sad joke, it is ironic that the object which is now at leisure is an object that was designated to be used for leisure. Yet seemingly there is only one kind of leisure allowed here, dysfunction and not play, a pretext for eventual disappearance. So this unoccupied rusty slide extends the metaphor to its surroundings. In, I guess, more Western popular imagination, great concrete high rises, and we, I guess, floating past a few now too, which is a very perfect timing for this. I often accuse the housing people who are at leisure. So, um, in a lot of kind of social housing accommodation, saying that people don't really work, they're kind of getting social. Um, Benefits, etc. Et I guess in Lithuania it's a little bit different story, but the set of prejudice um, against people as well. So since the word empty was first applied to people, meaning that they were free of duties, at leisure or not working, it is almost 
almost natural that the buildings become contaminated with this emptiness too. Maybe that explains the lack of public outcry when blocks of flats are blown up or slowly and painfully dismantled piece by piece. Because even before the site becomes physically empty, the buildings together with the inhabitants are already thought of as at leisure or of little use. Here's the slide coming out from the bush. <laughs> There's a widespread desire to mask this leisureness on both sides of the modern whether by planting these buildings in superficial armor or by applying a generous layer of paint, adding a pop of color, as some people say, can make all the difference. And the difference that is made is in its perception. Often, the explicit purpose is to look better for the others, the wealthier neighbors, the foreign guests, or sometimes the new wave of marketing inhabitants. To appear functionally and at work, the best of order. To switch the social is into the individual is. Where everyone is preoccupied with their own purpose of lives. Again, as Patan has mentioned before, having a job, not really engaging that much with the environment and being in this kind of quite corporate um, living, I guess, setting. So this forceful manicuring even seems to be shifting the psyche of residents who have long inhabited these buildings. Two blocks away from my grandmother's yard, I saw a lady painstakingly washing the latest cladding around her own windows only leaving a newly framed individual face to the shared exterior and that actually looked quite amazing because the rest of the flat kind of house was dirty except from the, the bit around her windows so leaving it quite framed so the, the psyche of people i guess is changing to individuals of um, caring of the communal sort of flat, flats so as with the painted houses so with the slide it needs to be changed, rebranded or hidden as it hasn't caught up with the progressive wave of privatization. Of course, authorities have not deliberately grown a bush around the slide. leisure to stay. It was said to be too unruly, too dangerous, too outdated and not fit for the habitation of a modern westward focused citizen. With this pretext of care set against what the dangers of leisure possess, the slide had to be masked. Not removed and not fixed, just masked by our collective neglect, carefully manipulated by the governing bodies, one-sided narratives and sometimes nationalistic propaganda. So the site where I grew up in, the same as the, my grandmother's house, was often referred as to the block. The block does not possess the same appealing qualities as a modern apartment complex does, and this difference in names becomes crucial. Changing the name or changing the appearance is more to do with the outside than the inside. They hide the presumed empty from the market, marketable public eye. We have to be careful not to get lost in the superficial vanity, not to give in to the fantasy of artificial armor that attempts to change the meaning of buildings from affordable housing to profitable looks, to resist defining them as an empty space before such sites are turned into a still life post demolition wasteland because these high-rise buildings possess the social history and the intangible memories that no profit could ever measure. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. But um, kind of, I guess, contextualizes both my personal take on um, these sites and especially the playgrounds which um, and the public space, which increasingly is getting smaller and smaller um, in these areas. Um, as well as the kind of ideals that are changing as, and um, which are influencing how the public space is being shared as well. But yeah, I guess there were a few connections to what... Um, My friend is moving to a new flat uh, in one, one of the districts nearby and because of the like rule that when you're building a new house you need to 
implement some sort of playground there. They build it, but extremely funny. It's like it's just the smallest possible like toy uh, horse and one slide, <laughs> which is so small that like it, it's only for the like three year old or something like that. And that's it for entire the, like uh, four store building. So yeah, it's very, it, yeah, it's quite sad the way. It even it, it's even not meant to to be played with. It's meant to just to have fulfill like, the quota to fulfill the yeah. And it also very sad to find that all these uh, um, children break playgrounds, like I say. And like I mentioned before, that uh, now that they are developing, they also like starting from the blank page, not the, that much reacting to, to the memory and the environment or the stories there. And also when they build uh, children's playgrounds, they are choosing from like two catalogs. <laughs> They're like uh, all the same all over the place. It's only because they have searched because of yeah. security. They yeah, yeah. yeah actually it's so that topic which is quite interesting in Chilene in, in, in terms of like, playgrounds and the, the few kind of old playgrounds that they all, most of them being changed, but the most interesting point is actually the makeshift playgrounds made by the builders who were building the sites and they would construct this I just remember one thing, I feel some sort of dream. I grew up, like for at least for a few years, next to one particular kindergarten for pe uh, children with special needs. It was built by architect Holinus, which was destroyed recently because it, it couldn't fulfill the new in, 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 like imagination, like, like contemporary imagination, how children can be not haunted by this particular uh, architectural site, but it, it, it's it's it, it's ba like it was built out of like some sort of like mosaic kind of structures with like very like kind of cosmic. fluid lines, cosmic kind of utopian kindergarten, cosmic. and it was flattened to her uh, because it, it it was haunting not for the children but for their parents yeah. somehow. And it was kind of declared unsafe, I think. But it's almost, you always, well not always, often uses a... Yeah, but I don't want to get it like, like, like new generation of children are cautioned all the time, they cannot even fall on their, like, to have bruises or something, what will grow out of them, you know. But uh, there is a point, I think, that uh, this, uh, like, too secure environment or too safe causes more, more issues than, than, than those with dangers embedded in it. feels in a way that you're depriving kids from the new experiences with new aesthetics even you know or uh, with the chances to find new objects that they can play with and they have to solve it how do they interact with these things and now like they uh, 
they are visiting, for example, grandparents in Konas and going to Vilnius, and they all find the same structure that they have to play. So for their imagination, it feels like home. Every time you're home, you know, you know exactly what to do, and that feeling of travel, of uh, changing places, of uh, being in a different context, different history, it doesn't happen because you're meeting exactly the same structures that you are interacting with as a kid. I think the keyword is uh, very important. Keyword is new, like uh, uh, the imagination always deals with something new, and you also uh, like new toys because you just yeah. find new ways <laughs> to play with them. So new is very important as a concept, and I think maybe this is what I'm sorry about this. I'm <laughs> destroying no, your structure, good. but uh, <laughs> I, I just thought that uh, as you mentioned, the beautiful. Uh, 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 playground, uh, I think it was in uh, Lazdina, you know, the, the futuristic yeah, one. I think this is why it uh, starts uh, to uh, to cause problems because for for the generation the generation of uh, people who are um, who are uh, regulating the playgrounds, who are creating the future right now in the municipality and it is not nothing nothing to do with the future and with the new it's old and it's past and the past is a bit depressing actually for them they want to get rid of it they don't want the same same past for their children as for our generation we didn't even have such nice but places I yeah think. but then the, the concept of like kind of renewal uh, with care yeah. with very particular care to renew what is old to be rediscovered some, somehow because the new it's not necessary, not necessary like uh, means that it, it's newly constructed. It can be rediscovered or refurbished in a way to, to, to cause the same purpose. Well. Because such particularity cannot be like even I cannot imagine that someone would dare to build something similar nowadays. Absolutely. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> I think we are lacking this diversity in uh, objects to choose. Turn to the river and the water and uh, the place where we are. Also, you know, childhood memories. Also, because I grew up here in this Komi Plak uh, district of uh, I don't know project type houses, and my grandparents lived over there, just right across river and uh, and you know even though you, you could see you know your grandparents district you know from your window it was for me you know always a big problem to go visiting my grandparents because you know uh, we have to do uh, really really uh, big uh, I don't know roundabout them. And also, uh, when yeah, we, uh, I think uh, there were only two bridges on this uh, part of the 
of the city and we, we will approach the third bridge which is Shilla which is kind of one of the newest bridges and it wasn't built then so kind of you have a big gap you know you now you have something like three kilometers to one bridge and three kilometers to the other bridge and nothing in between uh, also um, there was um, quite interesting period because the the bridge that we will approach uh, was um, the construction took uh, quite a long time because I think it was began in the 1990s or even in the, during the late 80s uh, and when construction began you know the Soviet Union fell and you know all the economic situation everything went down the hill and it was stuck you know for about a decade it was uh, an unfinished bridge you know, you know the the construction uh, I mean the structure stood but it didn't, didn't have anything you know no uh, nothing you know uh, for, for the use it was kind of like abandoned construction site so you know the bridge had you no know, holes in the middle it didn't have you no know, any security stuff you know. and uh, yeah it was quite an interesting uh, experience because you know it was for me kind of the shortest way to go visit my grandparents and as a kid I used to you know just climb over the fence get into this abandoned construction site and you know climb on top you know on the the first bridge block and then you know just run over over this unfinished structure and uh, now as I think it was quite I don't know uh, extreme activity but, but then it was you know my kind of everyday life and uh, you know okay uh, if we will go back you know from my childhood memories to I don't know something uh, more yeah maybe going back I would like to go back to maybe Vitanis what Vitanis, Vitanis said I think uh, maybe this kind of uh, situation led to that um, how to say uh, to to what I began to be interested in. You know. uh, as a teenager, I started uh, you know, visiting other cities in Western, Western Europe, uh, Central Europe, and for me it was quite strange because uh, Vilnius architecturally looks, you know, if you are walking in the old town, it looks like a European city. River bank, it's like completely up. We are actually in the middle of a densely populated area, you know, we have a huge coming block, coming block district here and uh, also many houses here, but uh, when you are in the river, it doesn't look like it, you know, uh, I even uh, did some, uh, uh, I don't know, similar floatings, you know, on the Neris River and you know it doesn't differ if you are in the city of, or if you are somewhere you know in the middle of a forest you know the river bank looks the same you know uh, actually yeah these old trees they are covering the the, the houses uh, and it's really is you know the Neris River it really is some, some sort, sort of like wild nature, nature corridor, corridor that, that kind, kind of runs, runs through, through the center of the city, city. It's kind of uh, uh, divides it into two parts the other thing you know uh, which is really specific for Vilnius probably yeah I would say maybe the, the lack of bridges as I already mentioned uh, so uh, two parts of the city are pretty divided and uh, and I I always wondered why what led to this 
sort of situation, why this led to this sort of uh, urbanistical, I don't know, situation, uh, and why cities took this shape. Uh, so probably I would come back to, to Vita what Vitanis said. I always also kind of started to be interested in uh, history of city of Vilnius, and of course, you know, then you know uh, all the uh, during Middle Ages, all the waterways were very important. Uh, but then, you know, it declined, and uh, during uh, I don't know the modernist period, uh, from starting from 1950s till now, uh, the river wasn't important. Uh, you know, in the mean, in the means of uh, know, transportation and uh, infrastructure uh, at all, you know, it wasn't important in the city. It was, you know, seen as um, uh, I don't know how to say it as as a um, yeah, ob yeah, obstacle. Yeah, you have to build bridges. You know, you, you cannot. You know, it's it's a problem in the city. The, the river is a problem. And uh, the other thing, you know, what was also for me strange that, you know, uh, actually city became a sort of uh, backyard, you know, like uh, wastewater sewage in the 20th century. Uh, so it, you know, now it plays such a role, you know, if you have rain, you know, all rainwater goes here and uh, that's that's the purpose of the river um, yeah and so uh, the other thing I think uh, why uh, why this uh, kind of use of the river declined during a uh, Soviet period you know which lasted Thank Thank you <laughs> Okay, the woman, the woman on the boat said it's her birthday. So. <laughs> Very fitting of our writing in terms of also. <laughs> yeah. So um, where I did stop? Um, okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, also. Um, yeah, the sewage system, the bridges, uh, kind of becoming a backyard of the city because you know um, all the modernist houses they kind of turned away from um, from the river. They are they're looking to the kind of main street, and uh, the river is kind of the backyard, you know, uh, and uh, that's how it uh, became such a kind of corridor of nature because uh, if you look. Or some some to some old photos, you know, which is you know from the 1960s. You no, know, you can see the comic block district already here, but it's shocking how it's naked. You know, no trees on the river banks. You know, no no bushes, nothing. So it's like just the plain plain ground. So um, and the other thing. Um, also, the fact that I knew that during Soviet period there were certain restrictions. You know, there were no, uh, you know, uh, no private uh, initiatives allowed. You know, according you know using of the river. You know, there were three three steamboats that were kind of working as a public transportation, but you know uh, the. Uh, the inhabitants of both di districts, if, even if they wanted to have a boat, they couldn't have a motor. You know, you, you can have a boat, you can, you know, keep it somewhere in your garage, you can use it from time to time, but, you know, um, if you use a motor, you you will, I don't know, <laughs> the, the government will take it away from you, or, 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 or I don't know, you know. Uh, it wasn't illegal. So, um, actually, also what shocked me, you know, when I visited first, you know, the, the Western European cities, how 
how uh, rivers are used often have uh, you know these kind of river tours and we we had these boats that we just met you know uh, 20 years ago uh, and it, you know, just kind of now it's the time when it's reviving um, and no the the river was quite i must say dead you know it was just you no know, something abandoned and standing in the middle of the city well, I don't know uh, what, what else to add to, to my narrative. I think it will develop. It has a lot to do with, with, with basically also not only the, uh, in terms of uh, using uh, trees as a material when so this is deforested and you don't have to chop them for heating anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and also but, I think agri uh, being cut. I never thought that uh, a few years ago, but recently uh, one friend of mine asked, how come Vilnius started developing so far away from the river, or from its main river? How come? It... And I thought maybe it has something to do with, uh, with also industry and materials, uh, because before uh, the advent of, of concrete, uh, we had very little possibility to cross the river. Uh, when when it's uh, full of ice during the uh, winter, which crashes everything away, you cannot uh, build a sustainable wooden bridge uh, across the river. Very very complex. So we have a few uh, stone uh, bridges, I think, uh, from from our time. Uh, but uh, before that, I think Vilnius just had a huge problem crossing the river with anything but a boat. Yeah, by the way, uh, yeah, I would uh, also add this, I don't know, historical fact that, you know, even um, uh, until, I think, 1970s, there were a lot of um, ferries in, in the Vilnius. You know, even here, you know, on this road we already passed, uh, there were probably uh, three Paris operating, you know, from this bank to other bank, and the problem was that that uh, during 1960s both uh, districts were already built and standing, but there were no bridges. You know, the bridges were you know built, you know, after five or ten years. You know, so and uh, even uh, you know, if you can remember, there was kind of popular Soviet song, you know, about Electrene, you know the the Soviet popular songs, kind of uh, that uh, that are about you know the new district, the new life, and new houses. And there was also a Soviet pop song about Durmune, and uh, the the lyrics goes, you know, something like the the young girl asked a guy to uh, kind of escort her to Durmune because it's like completely far away. And now it's kind of we understand this district as like one of the closest districts to the city center. And it, it's strange to listen to those lyrics because, you know, um, it's not so far away, you know, <laughs> why, why you're asking for, 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 for this. But, but no, then it was, you know, like physically it was far away because you have to, you know, the only way to cross the river, river is kind of the green bridge in the very city center. Like two hours ago, just before you all gathered, uh, one guy came up to me, <laughs> and he was like, like he, he was, uh, I don't know, he's, he's or something with dark glasses, quite fit. <laughs> oh, I remember, I used to cross the uh, river with a ferry, yeah, in the 70s, to go to school from Jermune to Atlantic. He said, yeah, we called, we called him, he, he called this uh, <laughs> ferry man. <laughs> He called him um, Paromsh in Russian. <laughs> hey, Paromsh! <laughs> so like that, he just remembered also how he shouted out. And funny that about those ferries, there is very little documentation. I, it's uh, also the narrative all oral, most. There are, I think uh, you may you know, find even some wooden, not wooden, but uh, metal poles in the bushes if you walk on the riverbank that are from you know, the those ferries, they were 
of the wire from one bank to the other. Yeah, yeah. I think this is one of those stories why I invited you. You told me I think, uh, something about the stones and poles along the river side. <laughs> I thought, okay, Julius is interested in those things around. Uh, yeah, and also about the, the use of, uh, of a river and the history. Uh, I kind of, uh, yesterday I, I kind of did a little of, of I don't know, mind mapping and uh, like remembering facts that I know and uh, and talking about architecture, I think uh, uh, most of the time approach to the river, you know, e even during the Middle Ages, it was, you know, purely, I don't know, functional and, uh, I don't know, not not aesthetical. But, yes. but when it became aesthetic, aesthetical, and uh, I think it was uh, the Barocco time, you know, like from uh, 1600s till uh, 1800s, uh, and we have actually a lot of churches, uh, and um, uh, and also noble palaces facing the river. Now, you know, this link in some places it's uh, demolished because, you know, we have some houses uh, and streets in between, but, you know, even in Antakalnis, there are you know uh, these kind of Barocco palaces that that has access towards the river, and I don't know. Also, there is no documentation or or I don't know historical material about it. But I imagine you know that it probably had a function. Probably during that time, you know, the noblemen probably used uh, maybe boats to get to their palaces, so you know their feet. Don't get dirt, you know, on, on, on medieval pavement, something like that. I think it also has to do with the with the, with the ways of speaking or narrating. I think the ro romanticism is uh, what would have made an impact for different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I also remember the story from uh, history teacher. It's okay, the banks of Meris were even called like. Precisely the the place where Vilnale uh, and Neris, the two rivers, uh, meet uh, here, it's called it was called uh, Smerdina, like a stink, uh, stinky uh, district, <laughs> something like that, because they used to dry um, dry um, belts, uh, leather, things like that, and, and wash them. It was all done. All this uh, dirt industry was also near the water because of all spots. The only way you can get big amounts of water then. So, yeah. I think also during, uh, I don't know, like 20th century, like the first half of 20th century also, you know, a uh, river was pretty, river banks were pretty industrialized. That's why it wasn't used, you know, for recre recreational purpose because no it's also you know industry needs a lot of water needs to take a lot of water and also needs to expose a lot of i don't know the used water so uh and until now i think you still have you know most of the industry which is still you know, on the riverbank especially uh in the south southern part of the city Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very hesitating whether to follow the path which I wanted because it's also it's a little bit destroyed. But I want to maybe I will just naturally elaborate a little bit, um, <clears throat> continue a bit on the industry part because uh, I also while listening to the tennis, <clears throat> I al already started to think that uh, what he is referring to uh, largely was uh, um, um, was has something to do with with uh, mechanics uh, or or uh, techniques uh, and getting free of it, like uh, having your your uh, free time, uh, uh, having your free movement, movement free of uh, of uh, engineering and uh, the logistics, but uh, movement uh, of 
your body or maybe of the water. I think it's where you, you break through and how you can um, be with uh, maybe your body and your time. <coughs> We are also now like uh, formally breaking, but also embedded in that as well. We have, we have some structure, we have some plan, we have some schedule. Yes. Yeah. So, there's no structure. <laughs> I know structure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah, so I just wanted to, to, to bring up this dichotomy of of mechanics versus, I don't know, nature may the natural processes which don't have the, the <clears throat> such such uh, clean purposes or designation. Then, uh, actually, what I what I <laughs> wanted to bring in here was uh, also a, a bit about uh, about childhood memories. Memory is not about uh, space, but memory is about uh, thoughts, which I had uh, long before I decided to study architecture. Uh, I had this understanding, I don't know how long I, I had this understanding that the world will change uh, uh, drastically when I grow up. It will be totally different. What will it be? And I imagined, uh, you know, um, we didn't even have uh, quality science fiction. <laughs> Soviet Union time, so we just we didn't know what it would be. You you knew that something will change totally. Things will be totally different, and you will be part of it, and even part of making that uh, that's a different world. There was this this sense. The, yeah, of course. Uh, when when time really goes, you don't feel that you are part of it and that you change it. Of course, a lot changed, but it's very idea of having a vision of a better new world this world word new <laughs> which was brought up by uh, brought up sorry <laughs> so, so i think it's, it's uh, very important uh, for ev for any visionary also for an architect uh, and how do you how do you think about uh, things uh, which would be better than the ones we have how how do you how do you conceive them? How do you imagine them? I think this is a, one of the main parts why we started this program of building narratives. Because uh, this is the foundation on which you, you build your uh, wishes, on which you, uh, those wishes become conversations. Conversations become design briefs for architects, which then in turn become a building someday. So everything starts from imagination and from the conversation and you could argue probably that uh, your imagination maybe is uh, um, was already started by the narrative you heard before i don't think it's uh, totally de independent so yeah i uh, wanted to bring up uh, two pieces of media which i don't think i will actually <laughs> bring bring into conversation. One was uh, about um, about the actual ways which we um, design uh, utopias. Uh, utopias not in, not in the sense of Foucault, not, not about uh, the construct the uh, notion of place, uh, but about, uh, yeah, just uh, utopias in, in, in Thomas More. Uh, sense uh, your your uh, imaginary better better world. So um, yeah, uh, I think the one of, of of the better examples of where you have your tabula rasa, your uh, dependent plan, where where you can build the happiness from scratch, and uh, on that purpose is actually. The, um, oh, I forgot to put the word in English. <laughs> they thought cruise ships. It's uh, there. There are huge uh, ecosystems where you have uh, lots of architecture of uh, 
different uh, des differences behind the mode of ent entertainment, uh, you know, the casinos, restaurants, theaters, whatever, whatever. And, uh, there was a beautiful, beautiful film. I will probably put a link uh, uh, in, uh, in the YouTube uh, uh, <clears throat> section under this video because uh, <laughs> I wanted to, to show it somehow here. It would be also difficult because of some, but for a uh, 10 minutes movie about, uh, about the internal uh, uh, ways how, how this uh, cruise ship journey works. But um, I cannot do it because of uh, similar reasons we are disconnected with Will Jennings here. You know, this uh, geographical uh, division. Uh, funny that you have these uh, no, arbitrary borders, uh, like not cultural borders. Uh, of course, Lithuania is a national thing which has uh, semi natural borders. But most of the world has really just uh, political borders. And because of uh, those, we are now restricted to move uh, um, because of coronavirus, but uh, also because of those borders, we have um, we have restrictions of uh, uh, rights to view. And like <laughs> two weeks ago, I, I shared this beautiful video with, with my friend artist. Uh, <laughs> now I cannot. Uh... Oh, I made it again. No, I cannot uh, see it anymore. Okay, I, I was too long on that. So yeah, well, so I think uh, it's very interesting how where our imagination goes when we have all the money we need uh, and we have uh, all the possibilities to make uh, a paradise. And it turns out uh, the paradise that we imagine is something like a cruise, which is pretty funny. Then. Yeah, and another another way was also another another uh, piece of media I, I remembered was uh, another kind of well, yeah actually, actually you can you can call cruise ship dystopia as well uh, it, um, it was from the writer Victor Pelet uh, he is uh, uh, contemporary science fiction or maybe political fiction uh, writer. How to introduce him? He uh, almost always uh, reflects on contemporary um, uh, Russian uh, mentality and uh, politics and geopolitics. But uh, hmm? Victor Pelev, yeah, actually, it's quite difficult to read in the Russian. It, it sounds very, very brutal language. But when it is translated into Lithuanian or English, it becomes quite uh, funny and easy. <laughs> Uh, and uh, his book uh, was uh, called uh, Snuff. Uh, imagined a world, uh, a utopian Earth, uh, which was um, inhabited by, uh, you know, sort of the classical dystopia where people are reusing the, um, the, the leftovers of technology from the previous ages. Uh, there is just an upper class which uh, resides in artificial moon, which is uh, called London, and uh, it is where, if you are very successful, this is where you can uh, you can move probably. And uh, this artificial uh, uh, satellite, it it spawns. The whole economy is based on uh, movies and the uh, media, which uh, plays. Plays with those uh, called orcs. <laughs> the orcs. Uh, it's the worst play with Ukraine. Ukrainian name. Uh, pretty, <clears throat> pretty sad thing. And, but it's about uh, all about how uh, the real power goes in need, and then how they just how they describe this happy life in this uh, artificial moon. It's actually sort of London, but actually it's. Uh, just uh, something like a very sad uh, apartment uh, block uh, with no no real light and uh, just uh, projections uh, with a uh, copyrighted uh, content, uh, very very costly. 
which you can afford to have and you can afford to have a project projection of uh, true London outside of your window. So I thought I remember that because uh, I think it's uh, somehow intertwined uh, deeply with how you imagine uh, the happiness and how you try to build. I think this uh, is all uh, series of our events are to do with. So I think yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Water and collector system on Vilnius around then, which is bigger canal. Get in, it is on around 500 meters to four kilometers and go across the river. Years and was also new things in this infrastructural part of Vilnius, new, best and most intricate ever tunnels are made or making at the moment. Mario, Mario game. And it's uh, sometimes. 
business of cars and it's like uh, the, the dangerous part of the engine will open and suddenly the car just goes. <laughs> but so you avoid these and then when you appear suddenly and you know this psychological feeling as well uh, influencing uh, my video works and uh, to this team I made already came up to me but it was like a that this dude uh, so it, it, it was the river uh, first and of, of the kind scientific he draw from different parts you for cultural anthropology part and really inspiring to do this uh, uh, script myself. Uh, the original was uh, in 1853 by Graf Konstantin Kavich and uh, he was looking from other different perspectives the river starting in Belarus beginning finishing Kaunas, start of Vilnius, context, let's say, and uh, came up uh, or experienced this with some phenomenological sites, you know, like a raft to the river, but self made object together with a Dutch artist. I'm on Marie Sara, who uh, traveled for two weeks. The distance was 170 kilometers. So you can see the speed. So the, the, uh, yeah, the speed was most important because our research field was island. So we are situated in the river, and which has like a territorial aspect which is not yet clear and not yet uh, defined and I thought it's a perfect like a field to, to you know to start something there and then very big uh, some hectares eight hectares some are really very small but just forming some are already
all of them. Five, six, three, or only or in them, first, left inside, grow inside, while. Some of them plant legal substances to accept their loss to pick, pick them up. Home for selling, celebrate all this good. Yeah, well, good out for the road. There, from the book, made a little book for production. Uh, here, I'll next to the owner. Rivers, the areas, and took the violin. Violin monitor station. Environment monitor station number one. And uh, the idea. Cities and to build uh, some sort of collaboration, uh, and we have these like uh, two stations uh, connected to these two like uh, cities, and uh, there is this all like a uh, utopian uh, uh, project, like to connect them like a deeper, deeper, double, double, double city. city connected by the by the some autostrada and so on but uh, not not uh, the water roads are completely uh, uh, not yet into consideration and so uh, this this year I initiate a new project uh, which would be uh, also connected to the island in Vilnius close to the uh, industrial part of, of, of buildings and uh, which also has a lack of like a cultural or uh, I don't know uh, spots or galleries or initiatives or cultural self centers it's like in that particular part uh, it's like uh, seven kilometers uh, In diameter, there is no anything, anything related to culture. So I thought it's a, it's a also a good point to start um, something new there. And uh, the idea is like to initiate this uh, uh, wild garden slash sculptural park uh, and kind of uh, initiate this like a new new place. Where Firstly, researched what, uh, what's, what's botanical and uh, what's, what's good, what's, what's possible to get there, and these sculptures would, uh, be, uh, would work as a support structures for to make uh, these like a <coughs> uh, wild garden, let's say, that each, each part of this looks like a. Uh, 
close to the island also there is this like a abandoned uh, electrical station
moment because we were really slow. But uh, yeah, it was kind of uh, for a couple of um, illegal rave parties. It was used as a I don't know as a place, and it really worked well because you know the island is kind of the no man's land, you know. And you know even if police would come and try to shut down the rave party, you know they, they cannot get into it. You know the only way you can get into it uh, only by the boat. And I remember you know. in an island, you, know, you cannot get out of this rave party, <laughs> but uh, soon, I don't know, somebody tried and find out that, you know, that there's actually kind of a shallow uh, place where you can kind of, uh, you know, your pants get wet, but you know, your, your coat don't get wet and you actually can get out of it, and you know, I remember, you know, in the morning it looked like, uh, I don't know, like, um, Biblical, uh, <laughs> I don't know, this kind of Moses passing, you know, the, the the Red Sea, you know, moment, you know, when everybody went this kind of narrow, shallow path, you know, towards the, towards the bank, you know, and the side. circle has closed from theoretical to practical what is going back and forth with the uh, hand drawn by the river. Uh, I guess we are close to two hours of live streaming and I don't know if I didn't just see much in wouldn't be much of you as <laughs> nobody would <laughs> have so much uh, so much energy to yeah, watch the so reality of, of storages nowadays like when you think about iCloud yeah. or anything like that what amount of data is there and like it, it's even impossible to like comprehend like to, to digest it with human lifetime capacity and it's the big problem with big data like concerning like become like supercomputers and stuff like there, there is no possibility even to to watch all the documentations of all shows in the, which opened today in, in the world. That's why you need artificial intelligence. They yeah. would. <laughs> read watch somewhere, <laughs> like earlier, humans get some 500 megabytes each day of like a memory, so you know, like information, let's say. And now it's like. A, 80 gigabytes each day, I don't know what's the... <laughs> So it's nice to distribute this to the city. And what I was also, maybe I forgot to tell it, but I see like cities or architecture as, as storage, actually, of those overlapping memories. Like you lay one on top of the other, on top of the other, and uh, you have like, it's, it's 
banal, but yes, uh, the streets have names of dead people, and we have memories of those who lived before, which is somehow embedded in, in, in the location. But of course, we were going back to this kind of semantic uh, memories. So everyone, like we were talking, like, oh, I was living there, and my grandfather was living there, and or, or I, I, yeah, there used to be ferry and so on. It's some sort of like storage of co collective memories. And when it was erased few times, because as like with, with Holocaust or like with, with, with exiles or repopulation of the city, like let's say like after Holocaust it was empty, and then in 1949, 240,000 people left uh, occupated uh, territory to Poland, to Szczecin, and Gdansk, Gdynia, this ter territory, in order to avoid the repressions by Soviets. 240,000 only from Vilnius like uh, area so it was repopulated again by others who were coming here from other like villages and, and, and other Lithuanian cities and they had to inherit something some sort of story about this location and uh, in many cases it was a uh, construct or new one and only leftovers of, of those like uh, parts of stories which were uh, left there them. So now when we dig in the city, I remember I was growing in the city myself in Vilnius, and uh, every day I used to I live in a, in, a, in a yard where it used to be like some sort of like Jewish publishing house. But for many years, like and, and also like one of the uh, entrances to those under underground like water collectors, like those re red brick ones, where like uh, I don't know Shmerke Kaczerginski or Avram Sutskever used to like smuggle books out of the ghetto so and this story was never told like to us neither in school nor like uh, it was not somehow part of the conversation now only after learning that i started to see completely new layer in my ex experience of the city so it's not it's never <laughs> a final kind of version of it so when you were speaking about slowing down and actually kind of engaging with the city differently and i guess what we're doing now right now as well and um, seeing all the fishermen and what you mentioned about the backyard being as well and it's something that you, I mean I personally at least don't really notice this sort of like another part of life and another kind of engagement with the city and from the back of the city um, that is happening and uh, what I actually kind of see is almost She said the conversation is getting interesting, <laughs> <laughs> getting more interesting, well, <laughs> not to stop streaming. Uh, yeah, we can continue. We, we, can, we can just leave it on, but <laughs> just uh, uh, drop some uh, uh, restraints on ourselves if, if we had any uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Forget about yeah, about the live stream. Just, <laughs> just stream. You need to tell us that you turned it off and, and then but you leave it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mostly care about uh, our our friend Will Jennings, who is walking now. Uh, I just saw a bank on, of the Thames. Now I see him walking somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, in in the crowd, more like, and uh, yeah. Uh, Will is still is with us, and it's very nice to have uh, this feeling that we, we had some ghost following us uh, in, in the real time and in different space. But we still, still didn't reach the city city, no? No, but um, uh, also Sandra wanted to have uh, this cityscape, which I think 
it's no sooner than in uh, half an hour. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> At best. If we after the next time we will start seeing things. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to say well uh, uh, well that uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> see it for yourself uh, as we decided to extend the streaming for unlimited time or time limited by batteries. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then uh, don't feel obliged to to stay with us because uh, we might be even less concentrated from this moment on. <laughs> Disclaimer, yes. <laughs> okay, it's a bit ironic that we are um, live streaming this experience and like talking about uh, the city and mediation and suddenly turning it into the digital information and like for people like watching it again, it's a like, reality show uh, experience. So like exactly what uh, the tennis was talking about, having uh, on your screen something happening. We experience it in a very yeah, but it's very particular, I think. Uh, only certain people has this sense of, of uh, I don't know how, how you call it, when someone in this fast kind of tempo, in, in digital kind of, in digital tempo, someone decides to watch 10 hours uh, Epic Sax guy play or something. Because this is something like, you know... I don't think this even happens anymore. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I mean, like, this stream is extremely lengthy. And, and the topic itself, it's, it's more like like kind of conversation, kind of like theories, memories, practice, and so on. And But it, the pace, it's very slow. And people has like, when we started the journey, I was really like having this kind of neurotic kind of thing. <laughs> Until we like kind of accommodate in this situation. So I, think the I cannot thing imagine like to, to like how dedicated you, you, you need to be like and I'm thankful to all of those who are bearing with us this experience. It's really the det determinism is there. Flow to along. Yeah, it's uh, determination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Determinism. No, no, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm this fatalist guy. You know, like, yeah, okay. Pre predestination led us. Ah, okay, this. okay. Give it, up. It's, not, it's, not an, it's not an accident that we are all here. Is doing. I think he uh, his stream stopped several times. No, 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 Ne, 
po to balsuojam, kas iškra. Aš tai pasiūrėjau. Ir tiesiogiai. Ir metaforiškai ir tiesiogiai. Jo. Kas nori? Sustot. Ką? Ai, nu jo. Kava veikia. Jo, aš irgi visai būčiau užsiškai. Visai švartuot. Aš tą patį galvojau, bet galvojau tik to vėl dar pakentėsiu. Ar mes slaugom susidūrimo su Ryga? Tu tai daugiau, šiaip visai daug veiksmo veiksia šiai čia. Visokių transporto priemonių sutikom pakeliu. Iš tiesų... Čia savaitė gali. Tai man atrodo, ko artėsime centrą, tai daugiau ir visko veiksmo. Net ir garsas skeičia su... Iš čia savo kasmo tas ir laukia. Jo. Vieną bandę pagalvo. Jo, bet taip, kur nežinau kažkaip nei tema, net iš tos erdvės susidūrė. Kokį ir tie ant... Taiko. Jo, jie irgi taip žiūri ir taip piplaukia, taip kažką diskutavo, žiūrėjo. Man tai patiko viena antis, kurį tiesiog, nežinau, kokia pusė kilometrų mūsų sekė, tai jis jau sukas aplinkai. Ir aš galvoju, čia man vaidanas ir ne čia aplinkai iš to. Tai gal jau norėjau išti. O čia labai keistas yra su tirštinimas prie šito kranto, kur buvo visi tiem takame pastatai. Ir tada dar po eilėje dar arčiau vandens. Čia visi visiškai nevyra. Jo, bet čia šiaip buvo mediniai namai. Ta prasme, tokie sodybiniai, kurie buvo prie pat. Nu tiesiog, jau kitaip negalėjo pastatyti, tiesiog nupirko tos senus namus, nugriovė, pastatė namai. Man labai įdomu tas konceptas su šia nugalinė kiema. Nes tikrai kaip laukiantis, aš žvėjus nomato tamsi, kur kitas gyvenimas. Aš iš dalies sutirkusiu tave, nes tas gamsiniai kariai darėjai, visą tas... Iš 
Ruky si nožiť. Na to si čo myslíte, čo Ir praktiškai šitas krantas yra Žinau, kai 4 metrai pakeltas, nes 19 amžiai jis buvo toks labai miestas, buvo arčiau upės, o dabar jis yra tarsi, nu toks per pylimą, reiškia. Jo, bet viskas gerai, man pavyzdžiui labai patinka, yra tos verdėjos, kurios tokias intermediate gali pasitaryti kažkokias sėdės ir jos tu leidi, jau būtų žiedos, yra viskas ok. Pavyzdžiui, kad ir net aš tikiu, kur tie žmonės ten sėdėjo. Nu, nežinau, aš tai kažkokius DIY pačių žmonių su tos protos dalykus. Man atrodo, kad reikia, pavyzdžiui, miesto planuotam, kad tuo mešiai nesakimti pavyzdžiui žmonių natūralių pradėtų tokių erdvių, kad ir kaip, kad žinai, tie tos dizaja pasakyti. Tipo, kaip planuoti kelius, tai planuoti po to žmonės, kurį užmindo ir kurį jam natūraliai einasi. Tai tas tokias kaip žmonių yra kreacinės vietas ir kaip pradėti su žmonėm pagal jų. Tai tas tai visiškai sutirkus su tame, bet tiesiog noriu tai, kad jau tai yra visiškai dėjai padaryta tokia, žinai, laukinis kažkas prieimas ir panašyti labai daug žmonių praranda galimybę, nes va, žinai, tam žmonės vėlesni negali nusileisti. Nei ten kažkas tiesiog, žinai, nereikia pradukti intervencijos, bet jis aš ten, kad tiesiog padaryti su levelį, žiūrį paprastai su levelį, palikti tą visą žolę, žinai, tu turi saugų galimybę. Man yra per tas spūgrindas teka, ne man tai braidžių, kai jis tam irgi tokiais klipais pelkiai tam, žinai, į šoną, ten venda be kūro, ten kitus. Tiesiog, kad klimskas tiek iki, nu, dabar tai nenaudojama, bet yra dar senos, tas klimskas. Bet ir porą tokių dėdžių aplink varnių. Nu, žino tos takus ir praveda grupės. Jo, jo, jo. O tai čia dabar kas reikia? Nu, čia reikia pauzės. Tai toletus maitė? Nu, va, tie infrastruktūra. Čia iš jautas atsakyti. Žinai, va, pavyzdžiui, tas irgi tas nuimas į toletą į kūmą veikia tol, kol nuina ten 50 nuimų. O kai pradeda įti ten 200, tai tada jau pazera nu...
Че, кава, это на рыбаку. Reikia tik pastebėti, kol ne labai tolė. Yes, things to think on, but first a pins. Enjoy the put in between your own. Sandra Parna could do gay your own. I wish I should. I wish I should. Ai, per YouTube, dėl to, o jeigu per internet, Facebook'o būtų buvo atėjo. Facebook'as išduotų. Svarsam, kas žiūri, nu kam čia gali būti įdomi. Ai. Tuoli. O dar prasidėjo. Sakė, daugėja žiūrų. Ai, tai čia sakau, realiai pašau prasidėjo. Tikra drama. Sandra Parnė prasidėjo. Tai buvo tokių eksperimentų. Kur keltų plaukia yra... Ten skirtingų kažkaip tautybų žmonės. Ten visi mylėtis ten pradėjo. Bet Lietuvoj? Ne, ne. Kad jau pradėjo tu ant kitą valgyti? Jo, jo. Kurį pirmą su valgyti stojai? Ne pamenu, kaip padinasi. Bet kaip ne, iš ant keltų? Jo, jo, jo. Jie ten... Žmonės gali prie kranto atėti kažkur ir pasižiūrėti, ką jie vėra. Gyvai. Nu, ten toks socialinis eksperimentas. Ten nu visokių prasigalvojo. Ten kur ne, kiek ilgiau, kas ne mėgos ir... Ant kelto. Ant kelto, galima viską vienu metu. Pagalvok, 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 Ai, nu, tada... Nieko nėra, maisto nėra, vandens nėra. Nu, gerai, mes kada turim dar vieną? O tu vienas ant kelto. Nu, gerai, nors buvo daug pradžio. Neipės savo surištas prie medį. Na, visi. Arba yra tik visų batų ir rūbai. Laiko dvi atsiginti. Kaip longoliera ištie. Ką? Žinai, jau toks senas. O, taip! Longolierai kružminga. Taip, o dieve... Laiką ryjantis šitie. Tu man pri... Taip, va kaip atnes, aš žinok, aš nežinau, kiek laiko aš galvot, koks ten buvo vaikystį, kur aš žiūrėjau. Ten man, aš nežinau, ten mano gyvenimo pakeitė turbūt. Jo, jo, čia ten yra laikštų. Tai yra tai, kuris toks mažo biudžeto, bet... Tai tuo metu grafijos dizainas filmo, va, tas nukas. Įtaką padaręs. Bet man, aš kiek atsimenu, kad nu labai ten kažkas, aš nežinau, aš sapnuodavau ir aš ten nurovėm visiškai. 
Jo, 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 nu jis toksai. Ten man atrodo pagal Kingo kažkaip gal. Jo, pagal nu, Kingo tai, bet tokia labai pigi 3D grafika ekranizacija, reiškia. Nu, ne, ne Blade Runneris. <laughs> nu, žodžiu... O kaip tai buvo lėktuvas kažkaip? Nu, jo, kas, jo lėktuvas kažkaip, man atrodo, jis nusileidžia, bet... Jis per bermudų trikam, per kur skrenda jo, ir dalis keleivių užminga, Aha. o dalis lieka atsibūdė. Ir tiek, kurie užmigo, vienintelėj, jie, žodžiu, kaip iš, turbūt išgrena visi kiti. Ir jie kaip, kažkaip, kur jie tam atsitikti? Žodžiu, jie patenka į kažkokį aplenkę laiką ar kas nutiko ir paaiškė, kad jie atsidūrė tokią tušiam pasaulį. Sustingusiam laike. Sustingusiam laike, tik tai iš paskos e, dejas juos tokie laiką ryjantis longolierai, kurie pasirodo visą praeitį po žmonių visą laiką iš, iš valo. Žodžiu, su... mm. <laughs> spiečius toks pukuotų burboliuką, tokius su daug dantų ir gerai išsidžioja kažkaip ir vis sugraužia viską. Gal reikės pasižiūrėti. <laughs> Bet čia panašiai kaip lėriai ir fotoshopę, kur kaip trintukų pratrinį į kitų kvadračiukų. Man tai, man tai tas uh, irgi buvo labai, kaip čia pasakyt, flashback'as iš to Lengolierų. Nes čia irgi, vat, priplauksim netoli žirmūnų tilto. Gabo. Lengolieras. Gabo laiko. Kaip aš minėjau, kad, kad mes irgi dažnai leisdavom, nežinau, pauglysti į laiką pas vieną mano klasioką, kuris gyveno, vat, prie pat upės, sena mediniam name. Turėjo didelį sodą, visą kitą, mes, ten, nežinau, kartais ten, nežinau, tarplaukdavom, reiškia, iš kokių turistinių žygių su, su guminėm valtėm, reiškia, tiesi į tą sodą. Ir, na, nutiko taip, kad, nu, jas tiesiog, kaip sakant, NT plėtra išstumė iš ten, tie labai nenorėjo krauti, bet tada kaimynai pardavė būtų ir ten jau pradėjo gyventi ten namiai, reiškia, kitam namo gale, reiškia, ten, nu, jau gavosi tokie labai... Jo, nu, bet vienu žodžiu, gavosi ten... Žalias toks namas, gal? Kaip? Žalias toks namas. A, spalva, Priešas ką, žinau, pilkas, juodas toks, nes buvo toks vienas pošnesnis ir mažiau pošnus, jau tas mažiau pošnus. Ir... Ir jo, ir kažkaip tą namą finale, reiškia, iš jų išpirko, jis dar ten kokį penkis metus stovėjo tušės, ten gyveno be namiai, ten jis deginė kartą. Ir kažkurio dieną, nežinau, čia prieš kokius penkis metus turbūt prasidėjo statybos ir aš, nežinau, ejau pro šalį ir žakteliau, nes realiai pamačiau lengolierus, ta prasme, tai buvo, prasme, nes buvo aplink, ne tik namo nebebuvo, bet buvo sodas didelis atvertas tvora, ten su obelimis, tokiais vaismėdžiais, ir, ir, prasme, ir tas sodas buvo iškastas, ta prasme, as, eskavatoriai kasė sodą ir ten, nežinau, penkių metrų gylio dobėtoje vietoje, kur buvo sodas, ta prasme, visoj toj teritorijai. Ta prasme, man atrodo tokių žiaurių ir aš nežinau, gal aš klystu, bet patiksminkit, man atrodo, kai šitą, va, kaip sakiai, pradėjo, nu, čia vienas vėlyviausia, ne šitas, tai... Kas taip? Ne, šitas, šitas į žirmūnų pusę pasipirmasis, jis yra šiam 66 jo. metų. Bet jo konstrukcija, man atrodo, pamatiniams akmenims irgi iš Olandų naudojo, man atrodo, ant kapinius paminklų, senai, iš, iš, iš žydų kapinių. Ai, galimas dalykas. Į, į pa, pamato tom kažkom konstrukcijom. Ir man atrodo, yra išlikusi porą į kelių rakursų nuotraukos, kur tam pamatam būtent buvo nu, dėlnai naudojami tie akmenys. Esmė yra, man atrodo, nepaminkelintų metų nuotraukos. Logiškai, nes Olandų tos žydų čia, kapinės jis yra visiškai šalia. Tai va čia apie dalinai, apie sovietinės infrastruktūros mie, miesto va, ten takalnio, atitvarėliai visokie ir panašiai, nu, kurio tokios Nu, kadangi daug yra tokių terasinių, kadangi į kalną pakopų įvairių ir panašiai, tai arba pro sąjungų rūmų laiptai visi buvo padaryti iš, iš, iš kapinių. Tai jau iki šiol, iki šiol pilna tų kapinių tai, akmenų? Tai apie ką norėjau pasakyti, kad bičiuliai mano skulptūros dar katoriai tas studiuodami, Aiskis Kavaliauskas su Roku, Valiauga, jie tokį filmą padarė, jie iš Antakalnio abu, jie tiesiog važinėdami po savo kiemus, fotografavo tuos akme, akmenis atitvarinius ir kai kur net nepaslėpta, yra išlikę tie visi ten tekstai iškalti ir panašiai. Ir jie tokie, nu, rinkinį rinko šitų, nu, o, jo, čia paskait archyvą, tų, tų atitvarėlių, tai tų akmenų čia visam Vilniai yra priskaldyta, taip, iš, išdėliota, tai prisiminu prieš tatų. Yra vienas takursas, dar kaip tik man atrodo, troba kažkokia išlikus maidinė šalia ir tam kairiajam krante. Tas kelias, tačiau. 
Вот этот скал настолько на воду все скалывает. Утерса Витска стопида в очо покранчес. Это скульптура. Jeigu ką? Taip esmė, prieš kokius penkis metus skulptorius berods... Kūna tas kėdžių. Jie, kūna tas kėdžių, nes to kėdžių, nu, kuris... Jis pridarė tokių visą kių abstrakčių skulptūrų ir pikudino po kiltais, tai kur atkilto. Nuo skulptūro sostinės proga. Jo. Ir man atrodo, buvo tokia kontraversija to momentu, kad vienintelis liko nepadabintas tam skulptūrom, tai yra karaliaus Mindaugo tiltas, nes kitų autoriai, kitų tiltų autorių nereikėjo atsiklausti, nes jų turbūt nebėra, bet kadangi karaliaus Mindaugo tiltas yra ganėtinai naujas, architektas yra gyvas ir besispardantis ir jis kategoriškai nesutiko ta prasme, kam ant kūrinio kapit kūrinio Sausėlės susiryškina, bet pas tai nelabai pamokysim. Jo, jau nesimas iš kranto. Labai tiksliai atsikišim. Bet atrodo, kad nutrūkia tie žonė linai, kur tas sausėlės turėtų kažkai pasiekti. Va, gai yra kažkokia linai. O gal taip yra? Gal čia dėl vėjo, kažkas su bazo. Aš tai galvočiau, kad šiaip linai, šiaip kelias atsikišim. Po tiltų. Aš tai esu tokių, čia dar su bičiuliais ten tokių fantazavę, žinai, kai būtų faina turėti, pavyzdžiui, po tiltų, va, kai gali kabinti kažkokią masę, gali pakabinti pavilinuką, kavinę, pavyzdžiui. Gali lipi per turi eklą, laiku, nu, nu, jis turi eklą dalį, laiku, kai žemyn. Ne, ne justinai, tu turi tik atplaukti ir tada tau išmeta. Bet šiaip iš tikrųjų, po šito tiltų yra toks kaip tiltelis, kažkai toks, praktiškai galima nuo kranto po tiltų praeit per visą tiltą. Man čia primena, kur, nežinau, vaikystė, aš ant gerą žinkelių tiltų daug laikštų, ten irgi po apačią, ant viršaus. Ant visų tiltų veikia, kai yra priežiūrai. Aš tai turbūt vandens, man nubėgi nuotinti siūlės visokios. Jo, ten pamčių visokio kūnė yra. Kai kurie yra tiltai, mažiau pažiūrėjau, tai galima įdėjti pažiūrėjau, ne bent kiti žinomis. Tas aikštelės tai dabar kažkaip girdėjo, inicijuoja, tikrai, yra naujų meninkų skriečio darys. Ai, kad... Jo, naujas, naujoviškas kitokias ir bent jau Vilniui didelė pinigai skiriai. Bet ne kvartalas dėl tokias, kur nu... Nu, tokias jau užskirtinės gal, aišku, ne tas, kur kiekvienam daugiau būti iš serijinės.
Jo, tu su tuo beikinio susiduri, nes tu viską gauni per tiekimo grandinės ir panašiai, tu iš namų ne, nebereikia išėjti, nes žinai, viską gali ten absoliučiai gauti į namus. Aš galvoju, turėtų, manau, kad reikti galvoti apie tas patys, kaip apie skiepų, žinai, tu esi ekspausti į mažą, mažą kovojaus, bet vis tiek kažkai patirti, kuri tau palieka, triggerina tau, nu, responsą, kad tu jau esi išmokti, tu žinai, kaip reaguoti, susiduri, atsitūrų bakutę, žinai, ir jau kitą kartą, kai pamatysi laurio, tu jis gal neregulinsi, ne, 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 ne laurio, žinai, žinai, viso, ar vies palinimo yra kaip ir tau būtų nereikia. Nes tu tikras, ar turi būtinai nusidengti tam, kad... Ne, būtinai turi nusidengti, tau užtenka, žinai, pajusti, kad yra karšta, žinai, be to tiek, kiek jau veikia, tau nereikia nusikirsti rankos, kad žinotum, kad... <laughs> Tai nėra taip, kad tau reikia galimybės nusideginti, ir tos galimybės galėtum dengti. Nes, nu, antrai, žinai, tas visas, visi tie baubai lieka tik tais naratyvos, jie lieka tokie netikri kažkokie, nebe, nebe kūniški, nebe... Ir, ir, ir refleksijai juos irgi per, nu, tokį, per įsitikinimą, kad ten nereikia eiti, bet tu tik tais girdėjai kažkui. Aš jau, aš jau pasimečiau kažką. Bet ne tiek, kad tau nereikia eiti, bet tu, kad tu būtum jau sužinojęs, <laughs> užnesisi... Tu būtum confident, kad tu gali eiti tyrinėti, įverti, nes savo patirtis turėtas, ne? Čia vis dar apie tos patys, žinai, kiek galima palikti pavojų, tarkim, fiziniai vaikų aplinkoje, arba tiesiog žmonių netgi aplinkoje. Kiek jos reikia saugoti nuo, nuo viso pasaulyje? Man atrodo, kad... Mm, čia gal, nu, ir man tai čia klausimas nesaugojimui ir pavojus, o kiek tos patirtis yra aktoros, ir kiek jos... Ir kiek besikeičiantį sąrangą, kurią gyvename, materialioje fizinėje aplinka, Jį diktuoja, nu, tarkim, naujas, nu, naujas savyvos būdus ir mes tarsi atsigraždami, atgal atsigyvim, kad kažkas kažko netenka. Tuo būtų metu mano vertinga klausia, ar tos patirtis vis dar turi savo apskritai kažkokią funkciją šitoje aplinkoje, ar tai nėra tiesiog gal kažkia. Nes, nu, faina, kad buvo gražu nostalgiška ir taip buvo aktualu tuo laikmečiu, šiandien jau tai yra tiesiog, nu, niekai. Aš tai nesutinku, nes man pro aktualumas tipo pažinti, um, ir dves, ir judėti, ir panašiai, man atrodo, turėtų visada aktualus būti, nes dabar, nu, ta prasme, keičiantis visuomenį, keičiantis aktualumams, keičiantis, kai mes, e, nežinau, naudojom technologijas, ta prasme, ta prasme netgi pasižiūrėti mieste, kaip žmonės praėda, e, nu, vaikščiai mes yra pakeistas tais, kaip ten jis, paskurtukais. Nu, čia toks turnas pamazys, bet, ir, nežinau, ir ta prasme, man, Augant gerai, gal čia yra nostališkas dalykas, kad aš ten visur laikiu ir visur laikščiau ir pridėdau, nu, pati pasakydau savai pavojus, bet manau, tas davė man kažkokio fizinio aktyvumo ir tam tikro pažinimo miestų ir gatvių ir, nežinau, tam tikro pasitikėjimo ir dviejam. Ir, nu, bet kaip tai tada, kaip tai, nu, kas iš to, aš tikrųjų, nu, pagaščiausias klausimas, nu, tipo, be... Tu miestu be, navigojas be, tam tikro pasitikėjimo gal. Bet ir savo rankiškumo tau duoda, tau... Tu jau pasitikis savim ir žinai, kad tu gali pulti pasigysti ir pasimesti, nu žinai, eiti kažkokia arba nepažinta. Tai tau nebereikia būti visai kas so safe ir dviejai ir sekti numatytų pevs, žinai, kažkokių. Nes tu ten, žinai, dabar aš eisiu už tu asfaltų ir aš tikrai neįsiu kažkoje kvartalo vidų, nes, pavyzdžiui, aš nežinau, kas ten su ko susidursiu ir kaip man ten nereikia eiti. Gal, atpratinga, gal visą poziciją. <laughs> yra dar priešingas, priešingas efektas į pačio, paties miesto, kai atsiranda dvoros ir visur, kur yra perkritis didesnis negu laiptelis, pavyzdžiui. Ar ten visur, kur nėra perijos, visur tu turi gati ištvorinti, nes tu gali, nu, mokus nesuvokdamas, kad čia tada gali pakraikis, tiesiog eis į, žinai, eis į gatvę. Toks pasidaro tada toks, nu, iš esmės, kanalų sistema, kur tau galima eiti. Tai kaip čia iškiai yra to gal ir su to public space, kur daug kur tas public nebėra, nebėra public. Va prie mūsų, va tai varkelėje šitame, kur ir kaip jis vadinasi, šitą, kur Čirlionio Kudirkos kampas tas, nu prieš šestais metų, kad ja. tu toks pandusėlis vidurį pievos, ten nalinis mažas ir aš abiejų pusių, tokia turėjo klaimėlį, neiškiai, šiuo zakaškai. Tavo, Kaune dabar irgi man tam nežinau, kad šiuo 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 Tuo rūžinai ir tu esi esi kaip gyvulį, žinai, kur jūs nukreiptas, kad tiek į vieną pusę eiti, o tada mašinos jau, jau kitoj pusėj, kur žmonės neveštė, jau ten nėra nieko, nes jau mašinos, žinai, yra toks prioritetas, jos gali ramiai važiuoti, jie jis gali didinti greitį, nes niekas nebijušoks į gatvę, viskas yra ramų, bet žmonės reiks suvaldyti, nes yra tas neaiškus faktorius, kur jūs gali kažką padaryti, žinai, su, sugadinti čia sistemą. Intuityviai, teisinga, ma, mašina yra, nu, mechanika yra prognozuoja. Mm. <laughs> Supratyti. Mažina vairuoja, yra, kas? Iš, iš, iš mislų. Dar jūs tai nutagyvėlant, kai nepažiūrėjau. Aš tai grįžčiau prie to, kad 
apie ką aš ir prieš tai sakiau, apie tą kūno... Tiesiog priminti, kad tie pokyčiai, tas metų revoliucija, ten milijonus metų vykę, visas žmogaus judėjimas seika paremtas jo kūnų. Ne, ir santykių su kažko kietų. Ir pastangai. Ir kaip kažkas artėja po truputį. Tiet ir optiko, ir kaip kaip tu... Žinai, va tas mastelio klausim. Ir tada, kai kai šito nelieka, tu prasme, viskas kažkaip ar vėlgi, aš taip, nu, nesu skeptikas, tas mes digital. Kaip gali pasaulyti iš iškalbėjimo, bet turime, kad tie pokyčiai, kurie įvyko, jie dabar įvyko per per nepilnus poros šimtų metų. Palygint su tuo, ką šitas biologinis darytis žmogus per tiek metų, tas mes, kaip jis evolucionavo ir kaip šitie pokyčiai labai greitai visą tą santykių ir mastelių sistemą su diškai atverti. Ir tada skitė, pavyzdžiui, nu, mobilumo kažkokio kūniško mobilinas arba tokio, nu, fizinio kūniško santykio stiprovio, pavyzdžiui. Tai yra gan paprasta apsiriboti tik tai tam, nu, minimaliu santykio stiprovio, visą kitą gali gauti, tai patenkinti savo poreikius kitais būdai. Bet jo, tai yra nauja tikrovė, bet gal tikrai nemažai yra tyrimų turbūt atlikta fiziologinių ir kitokių, kad tai nebūtinai nauda. Žinai, kur pavogai kaip. Čia yra savo tokio kurtas pradengimas ir fizinė tikrovė yra vis dar susiraplinkai. Aš labiau gal apie tą engagement būdė. Aš dabar nesusidursiu. Apie tam tikrą... Aš tik tą karą štai. Jo. Tu vaikštai koja visiškai... Po kiekvienos valandos 20-30 minučių, tai 5-26-30 minučių. Nu, čia va, tu visiškai. Tu visi žinai, ko įsikėtis ir viskai žinai, kaip jis to buvo įsikėtis. Tu karant įgūčius reaktyti ir reaktyti su kaip koja koja yra valius. Na, mūsų tikuo. Tai jo, nes tu tave jį kimsitėjus reaktyti su kaip koja 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 ko Didžiausiai jį turka kūne, tai nebuvo kažkoks savindybės projektas, kuris ten neištėgė ir turnėčiai pardavinėjo neštėjo vieną atvejį tą didelį. Nu tam tokių, kad kažkas iš turnėčių ten tų laivininkų privačių nepirko ir pagabenosi nerimai į Škauno tiesą. Kiek žinau, kad jie buvo gerokai pastrigę gal savaitę ties grįgiškėmis vis yra ta akmenuota. Primiktinai sūlo. Tai ir aš kritiškas erkvės pokyčiam, kurie yra išaukiami procesų politinių ir ekonominių, kaip tarkim atitverimai ir panašiai ir tas sterilizacija mėsų, bet tai būtent ir kritikuoja šitą dalį, o tie pokyčiai, kuriuos mes išgyvenom, aš metu kaip prisitaikymo būtinybę žmonėm ir juos tarsi versti kažkas į kitį medžių atėjimo įgūdžius yra nuostangija tam tikra ir mūsų nereflektinų kreipimas dėmesio ne ten, kur reikėtų, o kur reikėtų aktyviai kritikuoti ir keisti aplinką, kuri lieta tarp vertinti ir esu. Nors iš tai vat irgi. Bet tarkime, apsų naudojimas turi kažkiek yra ekonominės, nu, ekonominė paskata, bet naudoti Google, nu, taip pasme, orientaciniam dalykam naudoti Google Maps, kad tu orientuoti nuis miestą. Tai, nu, yra vis tiek paskata tų Tų kompanijų. Tai geras yra hito štyril, tas stebėjimas ir jos kūrinį yra, aš tai tiksiai nepamėk, kaip jis vanės, bet dauma, aš kaip būti nematoma. Ir jinai kaip tik ir kalba apie visą to, kad absoliučiai į logistiką arba infrastruktūrą, tai kaip GPS ir panašiai, yra visiškai military name. Tai jūs mes pirminė tikslas ir tolimiau jos plėtojimas yra su buvo susijęs, tada bus apsų, jie visai ką renka informaciją iš visų vartotojų, tam, kad tobulintų tą įrankį, iki pikselio, tai žinai, tikslumo, kuris yra ten kažkurioj ten jumės valstijos atikumoj, ten toks, žinai, apsverta tokia teritorijelė, kur tiesiog kalibravimai išpalidovo kameros, ne, vienas pikselis, kuris yra ten, nežinau, dešimt ant dešimt metrų ar kiek. Po to zoom outinį, ten visokie augmented reality žaidimai, kur ten padedi sukalibruoti vėl sistemą. Tai O ir visas skrolinas, viskas, tas negaliausiai yra tik tai ekonomika. Tu savo dalinė, savo tą biometrinę datą kažkokią judėjimo ir tai yra naujoji prekė. Ta prasme, aš irgi nemanau, kad ten jau visiškai off-grid ir atsijungti ir jo, vis tiek gyveni, gyvenam šioje realybėje ir su šiom technologijom ir aš irgi ten 
gan nevšķiet pirms labāk šeit pārdžiūrēt. Bet, bet man droga šoks, šoks visiek tam rezit, nu, visiškai einant su tam tikrais tehnologiniais pokyčiais, kurie yra įtakojami tam tikrų ekonominių interesų. Visiek kažkoks rezistants, man atrodo, tam turi būti. Man atrodo, gali būti. Šiandien nėra rezistant, o turėti savo galimybę, bet yra atsitikti, kad tai nėra galimybė tie šansai, tai kad būtum konto tebūt savo kūne, bet kokioje aplinkoje. Ir aišku, kad mes su tam technologijom tikrai gyvensim ir aš nebijoju, kad čia labai greitai tos technologijos jau bus neberankui laikomas, o kad kur mes labiau įmontuotas, žinai, patogiau ir tai yra neišeinėma. Ir, ir taip, taip tikrai bus, bet <laughs> tu prasme, gal nereikės iš jis niekas nežiūrėti. <laughs> Gal kalbėjot apie, apie sentimentalumą čia mes ir ta Vytenis čia biškiai pr- pr- prisidavė. <laughs> tada, tada sakė, kad sentimentalus smagus esi. <laughs> tada, tada kažkaip kritiškai pažiūrėjai į tą tokį bandymą grįžti į tą gamtą kaip sentimentą. Kažk... Bet <coughs> to pačiu, aš galvoju, kad dar čia yra skritis tarp sentiment, sentimentų ir ekonomikos ir tos mašinos. Nes jisai nesunku apijungti, nu, kadangi Tai sentimentai iš tikrųjų kaip varančioje jėgai verčia tave kažko geisti ir kažkokį skirti tam energiją. Tai, pavyzdžiui, aš turiu tokį juokingą kažkokią tai fantaziją, kad e, žiauriai fainas būtų miestas ar bent jau, ar bent jau kvartalas mano, žinai, kad aš galėčiau basas jame saugiai vaikščiu. Tai aš kartais taip iškiai ir papraktikuoju <laughs> truputį. Su man tai atrodo, kad tai yra, nu, nu kaip, aišku, tai yra tam tikras fizinis malonumas, žinai, bet ir... Ir biški, bet, bet, bet ir biški tokio. <laughs> jo, biški, biški kažkokio ir naivumo, biški gali ten ir tokio, kaip čia pasakyti, tokio, nu, kad dabar tai nėra mada, bet tai, tai biški nešai to, žinai, hipsterinius, žinai, jo, joginius, veganinius, žinai, tos laukus. Bet, nu, a, aš tai tuo visai negaučiuosi ir aš norėčiau, kad mano miestas, žinai, nu, iš tikrųjų beveik taip ir yra. Labai mažai dabar yra stiklų ar kitų pavojingų paviršių. Iš tikrųjų, pasas beveik, beveik gali vaikščiai. Tai, bet vat kaip toks siekinys, aš jį, pavyzdžiui, suprantu ir aš... <laughs> bet čia, vat, dar toks politinis, ką tu sakai, kad, žinai... Ta, nu, hiperstarius miestas. Bet to, manau, kas man yra ir svarbu, kad, nu, nesiu neįsivaizduoti, kad yra kažkokios pozicijos ar kūniškos, ar, ar socialinės, ar politinės, ir apvalytos nuo, nuo tokim militaristinio ar ekonominio intervencijos. Jos visada istorijoje buvo, visada yra, ir, ir, ir tarsi mes bandydami ta, taip tokį binarišką sudaryti sąrangą, kurioje atsiranda kažkokie šeities taškai, kažkiek kažkai sveiksmus atvindami, mes tarsi traukiam, pakankam į toli, nuo to su mašinerijos, kurią nu, Ir tai generuoja, kaip tik man atrodo, menkinę potencialą tavo pasipriešinimo arba tavo kūno savivokos, kad tu tiesiog priemi kito laikotarpio, tuo metu dominavusi būdą funkcionavimo pirkti mergrė ir tu jį tarsi įti įnešiai čia, tiesiog, kad jis ne toks rimpinas dabar, jis netampa švaduojančių kažkaip. Tai mano atrodo, jo, aš sutikus su tą kritiką, bet kad tu ne... Na, tas gal pesimistinis motyvas čia būtų, kad nu, nėra, a, reikia labai kritiškai ir, ir tokiau kartą kritiškumą galima atrasti tų smaikų momentų, kurie neduoda tau tyros pozicijos, bet mes nu, šitą kurizam tą... Aš labai turiu ne, netyrą poziciją šiuo atžvil, atžvilgiu ir gal šiek tiek jie mėgau jos, bet yra labiau apie to, kaip, žinai, aš nemau, kad iš vis kada nors gali būti a, toks nors ten kūnas kaip toks, outdated, arba jo galimybių kažkokių ribų plėtojimas, jis nebūtinai neigia uh, galimybę turėti kritinę poziciją ar panašiai. Jisai dar kažkokį tokį atidaro domeną uh, galimybių interakcijos dinamiškas su, su aplinkiu. Ir kai mes dabar kalbam dažnai ekologiniam temom arba kitom, kaip, kaip labai susirūpinė ir panašiai, bet tai visa ekologija yra tikram pasaulyje tikramta prasme, ar bagro kultūrai kažkokioj masinės, žinai, arimuose, ten, žinai, purškina ar dar kažkur. Jinai visai, ką grūdį kažkam ne tik verbaliniam, teoriniam lygmeny, o tokiam viskai fiziniam, kaip bagmo, tokiam bol, tas nedalykiai. Ir aš gal dėl to turiu aminį tokį, nežinau, net kaip čia. Bet man atrodo, kad jau, nu, ta prasme, visai kažkai... Nes aš čia nematau konfliktą, tas mes labiau ką, ką noriu pasakyti, kad 
kad, kad visas tas kritiškumas ar visą tai, apie ką kalbam, jisai faina, kai turi, jo, yra klešas, yra impact. Man atrodo, kodėl negali būti kažkokia sinkronisitė tarp to, nu, kas buvo ir kaip tai naudoti tame, nu, ką, ką mes dabar gyvename, kad, nu, nebūtinai, ta prasme, viską nubraukti ir... Um... Aš dar galvoju, skirtumas tarp yra įrankio, įrankio arba kažkokio maistymo būdo ir yra kitas skirtumas, kad tu savo kūną naudoji. Ta savo kūną išmoktų naudoti Sveiki. nuo visiškai be pagalbinių priemonių. Yra labai svarbu. Oi. Oi. Aš nešinau. Išnekant apie nostalgę, kaip dolus laivelės. <laughs> Dabar laikytis, nežinau, iš ko laikytis ar štalą. Pats įsvečius. Tik aš traukinu, aš jie dėgrįžti. Prisiminėme, kai kur būtų. Kur nekai gerai prisiminė laivas. Aš gerai. Nu, aš jau jau liūsiu naukinti. Mano savaičių prieš tai jis buvo prišvartotas su tenais. Prieksiai iš ekrano. Tai čia palano namo, ne? Mačias. Na, man ta patiko moteris, kur šiandien mano gimtadienis. Nu, labai norėjau, kad pasitikintų. Bet čia kalba apie tie architektūrą. Tai fantazija, tai nu ne šitas dalykas. Nu, ne šitas dalykas. Kas? Varža? Vitaminės ir pelės. Ir čerpelės, ir stogo formai, ir vežimas visas. Kas čia yra? Man pasakyti, kad yra pirma. Miniatūrinis McDonald's. Meditacijos stogo. Bet iš tikrųjų, kaip Katonas iškiai pasakojo, kad čia mes kažkoks yra sveikuolių klubo prezidentas čia atvažiuoja kartais po meditūrą. Jo, jo. Jis yra ir čia gyvena. Bet čia ne jisai sugalvojo šitą architektūrą. Kaip pat toks dalykas gimsta. Metimiausia, kad tik kuo tak. Jis toks net molijų apsimeta. Na čia daug skirtingų dalykų jau nevyksta, man atrodo. Čia kur net suspenda, ne jau ko eitų, tai viskas papiškė. Tos kitus būdus, kas kai būtų... Šiandieniniai, ką tu turi, aš tik, kad jis aiškinti, ką tu turi meni apie tą augiai, kad veikimo būtų, lyginams to, kas yra šiandieninis mieste, medidavimo, veikimo būtų, kur čia tas yra skirtumas. Mes galbūtų kaip tai yra paklitėm ir kaip tai, nu, kaip kokių būtų mažas šiandien. Na, su nu, aš tai. Pavyzdžiui, navigavimas gali apsirinti. Na, jie tarsi, aš pas pajautų, esu pajautas kaip jie atimai šitavęs gebėjimą navigoti peglų mes, bet kita vertus, jie davė ir jie gali tai yra toks back and forth. Ir tie įgūdžiai, kuriuos mes tarkim mokėti ir pažinėti kokius skirtukų versus tarkim eiti. Tai nėra kokybinis klausimas, gai yra blogiai vienas jau turi galima rasti argumentų, bet tiesiog vienas iš jų, nu dar kol kas ne, bet galbūt kad tai tie bus tiesiog įgūdžius, kuris bus dominuantis, kuris tiesiog bus Mes greitai artėjame impact, yet again. Žodžiu, žodžiu, jį. Ta priemonė, kurio nieko nevereikia, tai yra tavo esimas. 
Ir tada tu prie jos kliuoji kitus, prie manios, kuriam tu, pavyzdžiui, bežimai, jau niekas nebesvarbu valgyti ar kelpa ten bežimai. Nes tai yra ne mūsų laikas, tai niekas neskaitina, o žmogu ne mes turi kažkokį keistą pramą. Ne, tai jau nuėjo tėjimas ir vaikštumas, atrodo, jie jo yra tie beiskai, kurie tu esi keičia ir jie nėra nėjau teitė tėjimai. Tiesiog jie yra, jie gal pažiūrėjau naudojami. Aš labiau gal tie yra per šaudimo įgos. Laipėjimai, kastimais ir vaikų. Bet tas laipėjimas kastimai tiesiog jos moko laikyti liksvaros. Žinai, čia fizinis laipėjimas. Tu su išmoksit savo kūną pažinti, ko tau reikės, ar kompu dirbant, ar nežinau, ar ką vadarant, žinai, irgi, bet aišku, tas mažai pasireikš, bet jeigu tu esi gerai išmokęs, pažint savo kūmą, tau viską daryti yra daug. Tai yra ir dabar, tarkim, yra susiūlo tau kitus pažinimo būdus, pavyzdžiui, nežinau, į tyviausius susirinus, susirinus, lavinimo, nuo crossfito iki jogos. Ir tai, nu, tai yra vėlgi nepažinti. Bet tu pagalvok tada, kam ties crossfito, tarkim, tie užsėmimai prieinami, bus mažiai, pavyzdžiui, būdavo du, kam prieinami, o crossfitas ir panašiai, bus prieinami tam tikriam žmonėms, tam tikrom, nežinau, inkam. Jo, tai gal reikia tu pas bėžiu vėl apie prieinamą sumą. Bet kartu jie su savimai atsineša visą kontekstą, vėlgi mes kalbam apie žmonės, kurie nori funkcionuoti. Aš ir tą patį galvojau. Aš galvojau. Ką? Aš tikrai čia jaučiuosiu kaip kokiam kažkoks keistas toks likokiam šau. Ne, aš tu spainiu, ne kaip keist laikai šia baroko plaukiant. Šiaip tam tu kalbūt bei jau maišintis atrodo žodžiai Dingsta ir iš lietuvių ir iš anglų. Paskui nežinau, ne vieną galvos. Jo, bet pasakai, kaip iš abiejų kalbų tie žodžiai iš... iš nyksta, tai... Įdomas, kad jis gaudai oro. Toks kaip mapping, bet žinai, kažkoks terminas ir iš jo jis išakoja. Čia labai priklauso. Lietuviškai nebūtinai yra tik... Nu, taip, taip. Kaip kok buvo, aš pavyzdžiui, angliškai visai nežinai, kad iš... Nu, beveik nežinai, kad iš žiūrėjau Jolandiją, nes mano tu nuo vokiečių O tu teko angliškai motinti? Tas nuzimėlis su visai savo laikas. Tada tam tikrą sritį žinių ir terminų gauti tik tais anglų kalbo, tam tikrą tik tais lietuvių. Tai tada aš priešinau, kad buvo ant nekėta, kad tos darytis yra sunku. Ne, mes dabar visuosim prie kairio kranto prie verso dritą, kad ten turėjo tokia laipštė pėdą. Apie domi vienas įpaliai. Apie štai tik visi susilaikė. Tai tada biškai pasivadėlio tarp gal. Jis sako, aš sako, dirbu visai, kad taip visai, kad sako, brainstorminu, tik tais japoniškai užsirašinėjo, nes pati kalba yra daug konstitinė. Yra daugiau idėjų susitėti į tos punktų sakį. Ar tiesą toks yra dukimas? Tie patys yra grupai, nu, savie įvairių. Tas testinė medinė. Turėdamas vieną reikšmę. Mes jį pigėjai atidavę kaip paslaugą Vernam Bičiuliui, kuris kuris nubogino šitą ūkį ir į festivalį Klaipėdų ir pardavėjus atsiradavimą. Tai ką tu konkrečiai labai norėjusi. Tu parašytum jo postikį ir liko daugiau daugiau spalvų liktus, kur tu galbūt nenori palikti. Čia jau tikrai būtų soundscape'as. Nuo ko pradėjau, toks jis labai ilgas hangi ant gabo. Toks kažkokį pandemą nuskidėjų, tokie žinokių grafordinių kokie lankių. Tai kaip ir čia nieko, žinok, net ir neverta dirbti dėl to. Čia pasirdėjai. Mes norim pasisukti, kad visiems kliūtų abiejų krantų. Kupu minus bamperis. Yra bamperis. Pirsto storio. Galima jausti saugus. 
čia zersi miestas, geliausia tas Amskai, kas materializuojasi, kur jūs įdai tai kokas liepas. Tai splūduras, tiek ten atpaugęs, ten net įtrauktas šiandien. Žiūrėk, pagreitintas variantas to, ką mes dabar patyrėm, yra Vilnelė atlaukimas baidarė, visai, jeigu nes atlaukia, fantastika. Yra taip, žinai, ir lėtumo, ir greičio, ir dinamikos, ir paskui ir gamtos, ir mėsą tokie šmoty, industrijos kažkur biškiai išmeta. Ir galima turėti, nu, net vakare kažkada. Dabar veikia su mitra dalį, va, prieš šito, va. Čia jau per daug stimulacijos, man atrodo, aš čia jau įsimu susikūpti. Čia buvo stimulacijos. Čia buvo stimulacijos. Čia buvo stimulacijos. Čia buvo prisiminiau faktą, kad tą architektūrą prie pat upės, man visi met irgi romantiškai atrodo, kad yra kur nors Prahoj, ten, nežinau, kur namai, kur siena tiesiog, kur iškia smengai upės spranta, iškia fasadas atsuktas, kaip kokia Venecija gali tik visi išėjt. Ir čia buvo tas plukslux pastatytas. Atrodė tuo metu toks į pastatę, šiai kultūros sostiniai, man atrodo, 2009-ais. Kažkai metai prieš tai gal 2008-ais. Tai atrodė, nu, pagaliau, pagaliau kas nors stato statinius prie upės. Jau toks, reiškia, pirmą krekždę atgimsta čia toks gyvenimas prie upės. Iš tikrųjų, dabar yra žymiai gyvesite pakrantė, žymiai daugiau veiksmų vyksta, tai metu, nu, čia buvo visiškai kuščia. Bet po to iš iškia dėl ko yra tai, sakykime, galbūt istoriškai susiklosta, kad taip nebūdavo daroma, nes, atrodo, gal porą metų po to buvo užšalusi pilnai upė ir ledonišis. Ir, man atrodo, tiesiog pusę pastato nunešė. Kampa visą taip į laužį. Jo, jo, po to buvo taip ir padarytas, man atrodo, kad įdėjo tokia. Tai kažkaip ta architektūra vis dėlto apsprendžia stichiją, reiškia, ten man atrodo viršui ten yra VDU apartamentų. Bet čia panašiai yra ir apie dėl tos krantinės arkos momentas, kad daug kas kažkaip neapsvarsto to, kad jisai kai darė Urbanavičius pamatą, tai ten inžinieriniai skaičiavimai gan sudėtingi yra to, kad atlaikytų tas apatinis statramstis ledonešį. Tai čia ne taip apnūnė. Nu, kad jis prasido viršui, baigęs apačioj. Tai ta dar apačioj yra pamato dalis, kurį žinai, turi atlaikyti ir ledonešį, ir apkrovas įvairiausias laužimo. Ledlaužis biškai. Kaip? Čia biškai ledlaužis. Nu, toks kaip. Bet to dažnai, vat, kažkaip tas iš diskusijų Lokiam. O jūs ką darot? Čia susitikimų vieną galima išsumaruoti. Čia galėtų būti ten meeting room'o, žinai, kad nu business, round table ir iškia pastatai. Čia negali išeinės, tiek trunka plaukimas. Bet labai gerai, kaip tik priventinį tą tokį sorį man čia skambutis reikia išeiti. Jo. Derybos kokios galėtų būti. Labai blogas pavadinimas, kas įmonės viršui molesta. Su dabar ant tokio anglosaksiškų kontekstus. Tai aš dar kaip supratau, kad jie kaip ir jų nebėra, jau čia tiesiog nebėra kam nukabinti to daiktą. Nu, tas jie pankrutavo iš jūsų. Ir gali būti, kad dėl to, kad su eksportu nelabai. Kas? O ta ir galim ir taip išversti, aišku. Ne, ne, man molesti gerai vaikų pirkinti. O ką ačiū darė, ką molesti darė? Statybos. Geriau nežinot. Šitie fasadai irgi yra praktiškai pirmas aukštas kuškas tos daugų. O prieinami yra tie dabar apatiniai aukštėjai? Ten galima pamatyti, kai kur jis tiesiog yra po žemė, o tenais, kur ties kampinės viešbūtis yra. O ten nėra pils, va čia nebuvo pils apskamotinas tokia kažkai varas? Ai, tas darelis. Jo, jo, buvo, bet reiškia apie tą pirmą aukštą, kad ties žalioj tiltų kampinis pastatas, toks su bokštelių viešbūtis, tai ten yra, sakant, laiptukais galima nusileisti tą pirmą aukštą. O kitose užpiltinė yra? Nu, jo. Tiesiog kitoš tiliko? Jo, nes kai kur, pavyzdžiui, pagrindinis įėjimas, pavyzdžiui, yra ten tas teismų pastatas, ten turi vietoj to, kad jis vidui turėtum į pagrindinį įėjimą įeit laipteliais į viršų, tai ten turi laipteliais leisti žemyn. 
pagrindinė. Tai naudojamas tas pirmas aukštas iki srabo žemė? Jo, nu kaip čia pasakys, gal jis ne tai, kad pirmas aukštas jis toks kaip pustrusis, kuris nu atsidūrė visiškai po šalikai. Kažkuriam mėsų, aš dabar neatsimenu, irgi buvo padaryta, kad Gatvės lygis buvo specialiai pakelkas. Jis buvo pakelkas, nu, man atrodo, medinis padarytas, po papačiai kaip toks išeidė panom, kad viso tas, kad žinai, yra negražu, purdina, kas ten sakeitimai kažkokie, nu, žinai, dar part of the city, liko tiesiog, o po to jau buvo užpilto, kaip pras, aš kažkur gerai. Tai va, aš neatsimenu, kuris mėsų aš atskučiau. Ir ten žinau, kad ir produktus veždavo prieke, žinai, papačio, nu, sveitinai skaizdavo, sišiukštės. Aš pamenu net kažkokią fantastinę filmą, kur atsitinė New Yorkas yra taip paaugęs, kad, nežinau, Empire State viršūnė yra kažkur po šaligatvių, kaip pras mes įdūrės. Ir ten, aišku, jo gyvena kažkokia, nu, varkšai žmonės ten tose apačioj. visiškai plana, viską girdi, kas vyksta šalia. Jie sėdi prie to laivo, aš nekėtų savo gyvenimą, nu, ten gliai labai jau, žinai, ten kaip kas, ten, žinai, ir tu jau galvoj, jau nelylysi, nes jau čia jau tik per salūžim iš savo darosi. Ir po to jie pasisuko pokliaus, tai jau, ne, važiu laivas. Sakai, dėl, davai ten kažką, žinai, nesupranti. Ir mes, tai, žinai, jausytės tačios pasidaro, nes tu jau girdi čia, apie mum išneka. Jis sako, jeigu kas nors yra, žinai, mergi Ir jūs pabaigtų, tai iš čia kad nieko nėra. Sakai, davai, davai. Nu, dar ten kažkai atmeš nekėjo ir po to kitas žingsnis, nežinai, jau girdim, kad laivas į buot pradėlė, nes buvo dalis laivo kajutė uždaro, dalis atvira. Tai jie tą atvirą dalis buvo atsisiesti. Ir mes abu išlovus, pašokim ir atsidarom liuką, žinai, ir išlendam, kaip jie varkščiai išsigalbo. O tas nei keturiojo iš to laivo, aš ir jau kaip jaučiu pasako iki du vieną, kaip ten, žinau, Net nespėjo, jau čia mūsų pamatyti, kad kol nori tą judėsą. Liukas atsidaro, kai išlėm. Tikai, kad jie galvojo nužudys ten iš to laivoje. Tose, žinai, mums nejaukų, kad jie yra, bet jiems irgi nejaukų, kad žinai, kažkai jis tėra. Reikėjo irgi tą savo asmeninėm istorijom. Nu, man ir taip buvo, žinai. Šitas? Nu, kas šiaip? Akurat. Tu skirtingi romantiniai požiūrėjai. Čia ne toks tai, wow, čia tuš, 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 tuš. Tai čia nėra architektų sąjungai įsikūrėjai. Tai štai pilatė yra architektų sąjungai. O čia yra baigtas, kuris kažkodėl užvadintas delfinų. Tai aš buvo baseinas, anksčiau buvo delfinas ir tą baseiną nugriovė ir vis tiek pavadino delfinų. Tai va. Ką pastatėm tai šiaus. Tai čia dėl draugiško, nu žinai, jaro dalykai. Kušutas anas, delfinas irgi gera. Tai va, tai čia yra projektas, kas tačiau pamitas, kuris architektų sąjungos pirmininkus buvo. Ir realiai būtent šitas kontrastas ir pastatų, ir būtent rolė to autoriaus, tai čia sukelia daug bungų. Nulupo, nulupo Seimo garažų šitą tos fontanus užmokleidimus. Neiškintė. Pakalbėjau, pakalbėjau. Tu tokį tapus atsakai. Ką? 
Nu, tu paši galvo, kā kāds ir tam pastāk, kā kāds tu mācīs. Izpanto vaidā tev. Ai, tu tot gal. Es līgi tā pat. Es nav kur pakarīt. Tas ir man dramats. Jūsų ramiai kalbėtų. Kad net ir ten, nors ir buvo porų momentų, kur galo faina būtų įsirpti pokalbį, bet kažkaip atrodo, žinai, pat žmogų mintis yra kažkaip yra tas laikas ir net nelabai. Nelabai po to buvo. Man tai čia net tokia keistesnė miesta patirtis. Čia pas esi plaukas ten kažką lūpėm, miškais, bet tą patį miestą, kur čia vaikštė pirkų sniega, po jūsų tai ypatingai garsi mes tas man. Taip, 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 garsas, tai ypatingai, po tiltų. Man patiltų, taip labai patiltų. Bet čia tipo iš kurtų šono, kur tu įpratės būtų su didžiojai tą garsą. Tai būtų tai su temeli miškai, tai gal skirtumas yra to, kad tu kontroliuoji valdai, nu, arba ten, žinai, paitariai kokio ir valtį, kažkur tu kind of in control. O čia toks tu, nu kaip, tas sukimas, jis turi tokio momento ir tu paviškai nekontroliuoji beveik, nu tik atsispilė, ne nuo kranto. Man tai dar toks psichodelinis biškai patvirtis pas to visukantis, nes jie būtent iki pratės plaukti kokią baidarę, valti tokio tipo laivais, visų met, žinai, nu kažkaip savo vietą. O dabar ta vieta atrodo pas to veikiai kintant, ir plus denis yra kvalus, Ir, dabar esame, jokio skirtumo, ar tu ten sėdi, ar čia sėdi, dabar esame, tu... Nėra priekio. Jo, nėra priekio, ryškia, tu tai yra kartais esi gale, kartais šonė, kartais priekio. Jo, tas fainas, nėra herarkinės kažkokios... Jo, tai visai, ką gražiai per du, ir simetriškai atsisvojo. Kaip sutraukia. Abenakinė visai, bet... Ištai. Medinė, ne? O, bet čia nebeliko tos skulptūros, tik dabar pastebėjau. Aš irgi kavojau skulptūrą. Tokio kaip grandinos gabalas. Nu, ištaukia ten kiaušinės biškinė. Ai, tai tik tiek grandinės nevėjo. Nėra durės, yra išlaustas, o jie jau iš tol atrodo atrida, bet prieinė jos atsidaro įindą. Tiesiog kambarai, tušti visiškai betoninį, o tai eini toliau ir tada ateini yra irgi dvi dalės. Čia galima arba ten galima. Ir ten biškiai pasivaikštė. Kartais ir prieinė tuos didelės santorios, kuris jau reikia lipti, kur virš yra kitas sektorius. Aš prisimėjau tiesiog į patį principą, iš tokio dar santykio su miestu. Ta visa tokia, žinai, nesenai buvo tas filmas rodytas, tas bimų, bet vėl priminė apie tą industrinės kažkos muzikos pradžią, bet tokį per santykį su miestu ir, pavyzdžiui, tie Einsturzinde, Neubojden, nesu bliksa bargaldu, kur tai tai koncertai, kur nors patinti ar kitur vykdo, tai perkusininkas toks nors jisai groja su tilto konstrukcija. Kiti aplinkui dar instrumentus, bet prasme, kad vienas iš tokių būdų buvo saveikos su tuo miestogarsiu didžiakoju. Ir tada tu atsužaliuoji tiltų, žinai, kontaktiniai mikrofonai ir tam įtraukia tuos kažkus industrinius ar kažkus kažkus garsus į tą į tą garsinį savo kažkai turinį. Man tai dar kažkaip prisiūkiau vieną tokį istorinį atvejį. Tai Sex Pistols koncertas laive. 
per Berods karalienės jubilėjų. Čia galėjo būti kokie 70, jau pamėluot, apie 70, nežinau, 7-9 metus. Kurie būtent pasirinko tokią kaip protesto formą, kažką plaukyti temzę, kažką Londono centru ir gadinti šventę, kad mes vienuodami Gods of the Queen in the fascist režimu. Gadinti šventę. Ir biuros ten buvo kažkoks skandalas su to, kad policija kažkaip bandė juos areštuoti, bet ten aš turėjo laivą policiją. Jos sunku buvo jiems ten prieiti. Lygiai taip pat kaip su tuo reivu saloje, praktiškai. Jeigu dar plaukianti saloje, su tais varikliais, tai jo jo, bet žinai, jeigu tokia, kurie gamti, ne, žinai, man atrodo, kažkur aš dabar žiūrėjau kažkokią laidą, nepamnu, išgeravo iš galvos, bet kur žmogus kūrė tokią plaukiančią augalinę struktūrą, tas ne kur, nu, kaip plaukiantį salą, ne. Simon Starling ir Pietų Amerikoje žemdėpnystės būdas, kad jie pasidaro salas su ryša iš... Ką Simon Starling? Irgi tokia salą plaukiančią salą. Aš kažką atsiskaukė visiškai, tai jie atgirbė persmukį. Laikančią. Yra tik ataisyklė, kad motorinis turi pralesti do motorinis. O mes apie mašinoje, mašinoje, kad aš nekėjom. Ataisyklė netokia. Bet čia yra skaitosi vandens kelias oficialus, ar ne? Taip. Taip? Tai tada mes neturim teisės plaukti forvaterį iš visų. Mes turim būti auto forvaterį. Mes pastumėm forvaterį. Kaip? Mes kartais pastumėm forvaterį iš kelių. Tai ten, kur ne forvaterį, gali plaukioti ir tas viskas nieks tavęs. Mes dar atplauksim kaip tik vapas. Bet forvaterį, jeigu būtume, tai visi lėtesni turi praleisti gaidesnius. Na, bet... Taip. A, supratau, nes manau, kad mes apie štuntą turbūt išinėsim. Aš dar visas per vienas vinkis gyra. Tai gerai, aš toj tada pasiaiškinsiu kolektyvo nuotaikę. Dabar reikia tą į kitą pusę įmerkti ir klabi šį daug įstatysis. Tuo ne mums buvo rezervuota vieta veranda, jeigu kas nežinau, kokie jūsų planai ir kiek jau čia visus užkniso šitą matytos pačius veidus. Bet gal pasistiprinti ir pintos kaip. Mes kit firmėm pritrauksim. Nereikia. Nereikia pritraukti, ką mums pritraukti. Reikia. Pabūks ir vat norit. Aha. Gali to būti vadvišti? Bet mes taip pravi plaukia apie jokios muzikos, kas tik pravi plaukia apie jokios muzikos. Gal, 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 Ar ne reikia, žinai, ten ar viskursus. 
Ne, ir tai tik netarp pusą veikinčias jis yra ir reikia, žinai, mano teisė, kad jie buvom pasirinčiai, žinai, kaip paskui, ten ką pat paaiškėjo, kad yra lenamo nuomonė protektoriaus, kuris vienintelis mus gali patikrinti Evo. Bet to, žinai, ne, pasak, kad čia čia nereikia. Nereikia, ne, ne. Tai kas patikrinti, tik galiu pusą. Tiesiog sakau. Visi, kas dirbs kiekį, kai spraistėm tos, žinai, laivą medžiukų, jis yra pavyr, nu, taip labai sunku rasti tą laivą, kai jis yra čia nuslovakė, labai išgerbė. Ką tai kaip jis tiek per žironus? Galim jį trapsim koncertą, o kas bilietų neplėjom.
Nusamdė kitus ekspertus, kurie sakė, viskas ok, viskas ok. Tai va, aišku, žinai, esmė ta, kad projektuoja pasakyti ten tos apsaugos, tas limitas, yra žiauriai didelis šiaip, žinai, kad žinai, paskaičiuoja daugiau, tai, kad ir susilpnėja ta konstrukcija, žinai, ten, sakai, gerai, vis tiek laičiausiai laikyti, tai aišku, tas 
Sau gužu, nai vėl matas jau su mažėjo. Ну, ты пчелай, Я 
Šiaip ne, taip užstūmėm. Aikštį. Va čia kurtas ženklas reklaminis, ten tokia kaip pėvutė yra, ir ten yra dangčiai, vienas iš jų yra sveidimas aukščiau čia buvo, kur dabar tas dvira čitako. O kur tos naujus tato ten jie tinkami ekspedicijoms? Jo, tik ten dviejų metrų, nu dvidešimt. Ten kažkaip įdomiai, aš pradžioj nesupratau, kas ten vyksta žirmūnų pintės karėjų gatvė. Jis ten tokios didelius kubus statą nu namo dydžio, ta prasme, bet jis išlieja kažkaip ant žemės, po to iškas aduobė ir jos nuleidžia. Aš kažkaip pradžioj galvoju, čia tokios kioskus kažkokius statą, kažkokius namus, kaip tokios miniatiūrinės filtas. Čia tos filtravimo statys. Šiaip po elektrį, po iš kelių šakos kelios aškos susijungiai tarp. Jo, jo. Jis atrodo tokia, nu, kaip, nežinau, grūt. Galima iš to būtų, vas, nu, atrodo padaryti kažkokią grūtolistinį, ten, nežinau, nedidelį namą, kur yra tas tokias kubas su tokiam didelėm apvalionų skilėm, atrodo. Ir langą padaryti iš to. Tai kas panašaus, nežinau, bet dabar nerado ten tokių vidui, tokių gyvenviečių kokių. Jo, jo, jo. Ne, bet vieną kartą motociklą rado. Ja, va. Tokios galėtų būti Vilniaus katakom, pač ne kaip Paryžiaus. Įdomu, kaip atrodytų šitą negatyvas. Kaip dar su termitų lizdai sėdėti ir kokią nors ten, nežinau, aliminio ar ten dar kažko. Tai išardo ir mato visą tą tunelį struktūrą. Suprantu, va tos atitos mozgus išimtum, tai jie tokie būtų tokios eglutas kažkokios. Ten dar vienas naujausios pamatos, tokia betoninė ta. Tai ten žiūrė tokia telpykla irgi filtravė. Ir to dar nebuvo. O žvėrinė irgi yra kažkoks, ne? Ten šitoj pusėj nevingio parko, o... Čia Automatizuoti robotas kažkoks taip pat. Žinau, man jis taip pat pičiai yra čia kažkokia ar ne čia. Dabar kaip nesėjo per šitos stalker walks, man atrodo, tu irgi buvo eikit, ten jis ir irgi tarp sakė, kad čia kažkur ten galima nusileisti. Nu, to ten toliau, ten už Geltoną tiltą. Ir parkė. Šokiu. Jo, jo, šiaip. Tai gali irgi iš iPad'o paleisti ten. Nu, pritapti labiau su kitom plaukiečiom struktūrom. Bet mums vis tiek reikėtų kaip į kitą pusę peksimą. Ne, tai taip ir bus. Va šitas posūkis jis mūsų taip ir nesitės. Ir užimės, jo, jo. Gal ne visai pakankamai, gal dar atsistrus stipriau bus galima. Ar čia vieno krantų jau tam? Yra toks neblogas buvo pasiūlyt, gal ir realizuotas ar ne, skizas Saksino Gedimino ir esmėjo, kur buvo kažkoks skulptūrų ten Navako, ten dar kelių projektai nerį, ten Navakas tokia dirbtinė gulbė į kėlio, o kiek gedo buvo toks pasiūlymas. Kambarį tokį visą, neri kaip negatyv, su vandens lygiu, bet išsirptas vanduo iš vidaus į tos. Bet vanduo skyčiasi. Nu jo, bet esmė ten gal laikinas šios projektų, bet tos kubas išimtas vandens. Ar buvo padėjus. Čia kaip Valandija yra mes tiltas. Jo, ten padėjau instaliuoti tai atsimenu. Jo, buvo kažkas surglys, ne iš traukinėjo Valandija. Ta navo kogulbė, ten kapavogė kažkas. Gulbė ar gulbė? 
Bulba tokiam netikra. Bulba bulba šopas. Aš jį dirba kažkam, kažkam pasakė apie mėnesio bulbę, bulbės projektą, bet iš gerbo, iš gerbo bulbę ir ten rėk, kad lietuviai bul, bulbę, angliai pjom ir kol. Aš jį pasakė apie bulbę. O čia kokia bulbė? Jau buvo malu. Į ten sakė, ten šarau kelias buvo 2003 kokia. Ar vėliau gal? Ne, ne, ne. Gal penkti, penkti. kitšinių skulptūrų, bet dalyvavo berods akstinas su kažkotas. Bijau su melod, bet jie padarė labai konceptualią skulptūrą. Jie tiesiog gavo kažkokį plotą paplutinį, išarė ir užsadino bulvį. Šiuos jau mažas, jis toks turi būti. Bet man atrodo, čia yra kvitalis to, nes visai, kas sovietmečių ten buvo paplutimiai kiekvieną naktį užvarėmė su traktoriais. Vis ten pasiena zoną ir pabėgimas iš Sovietų Sąjungos yra griešiausias, nu, nu, nu. Pabandžiau, draugia, kiekvieną. Kažkaip pasiena draugia, kiekvieną draugia, kiekvieną draugia, kiekvieną draugia, kiekvieną draugia. Ir jie svardavo, nu, lengva atsekti pėtsą, kas ar yra, nu, ir po daug suprožiai išliesdavo, kad žvodo. Jo, kažkaip fainiai. Bet jie rankom traukė vienas, draugo kitas traukė. Aš taip nerašiau, aš taip nerašiau. Na, aš kaip čia kažkaip. Aš šiaip keistai laikau. Šitas kažkaip tik dylį prasas. Tu turim pirsti, tu teisingai laikia, aš žmokas, aš nukaitys, aš nukaitys. Na, kiek pirsti. Kai mes atsieksim kitą 
Spirk šitai sienai, stipri. Geriau tą medinį. Bet patirtis būtų nepilna, be lietaus. Kaip be būtų. Visur tokias galvoni išlysti, kas kiek palikti. Tokias saulutė, toks nefinės, mamai, atvaldė. Lūkiai, čia santelės, kad buvo tu galvo. Ką nėra prie kolonos, prie kur pirakinti, beje, tik tai problemų. 